All right, we call the meeting to order. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Does anybody have anything they want to amend? about Bethel Gilead. Our hill is almost impassable. It is a nightmare. Um, I've been told many things. Today I finally went to the town website looking for the phone number to call the town office because I left a message on Thursday night at the town garage, which I was told to do. 
and they still have not put the answering machine identifying who it is. It's just a blank message. So I left a message. No one called me back today. I did call the town office. I finally poked around on the website enough that I found the bids that it's going out to bid. Well, my understanding was that it was already up to bid and they were just waiting for FEMA approval. Imagine my surprise when I see that it's not even supposed to be completed. The date is like September 19th. That road's like gonna barely survive and I've not gotten a call back from the town garage I've called twice. They didn't call me today. I had to call in. I still, no one's called, nobody's done anything, nobody's saying anything. I feel like I know the old town manager's gone. I'm sorry, thank you. Because he was condescending and rude to me and I just want to know when the road's going to be passable. I don't want to lose my car in the ditch. And if the road's not maintained, it's not going to be any good. If there's no ditches, the water's going to go where? Wherever it pleases. A lot of this on this road, on our hill, was from not maintaining it last fall when it started eating away at the side. I just want some answers. I want to know the truth. I feel like I've been lied to. Well, That's where I'm at. Well, thank you for coming tonight. Um, you know, the, the FEMA process is I know. All about a it. tricky one. Um, you know, it's not quite as fast moving as we would like it to be. Mm -hmm. um, so it, come, it, it comes in a couple of phases. So the first phase really is uh, our local response to it, which is get the roads open so that people can get out, you know. So if you take, uh, you know, the day after the flood on is, you know, get people out of the house. Uh, I know, it's two days. You know, you which some of these roads were, you know, one lane, uh, you know, might have taken a week to, in some roads to get people, you know, going. Um, and then once we get FEMA involved, we have to be careful because we identify the areas exactly the way they are. So we can't, we can't do any improvements. We can do maintenance um, to allow travel, but we can't go out there and start uh, permanently building things. Uh, or we can lose our funding, which, you know, when it comes to the FEMA, you know, uh, at the end of the day, you know, 85, 90% of the overall cost will be taken care of by the federal government on those gravel roads. Um, so what we've been trying to do today, is, and unfortunately, you know, Gilead Brook Road isn't the only one that was affected by it, is, um, so we're trying to maintain these roads so that they are passable um, safely, um, as well as trying to do our other normal functions that we normally would do this time of year, which is, you know, paint crosswalks, which, thank you, everything looked really good. You guys did a good job today out there. Um, so we're trying to do our normal program, but still trying to do catch up. Um, and, uh, you know, we had a really long winter. So, you know, we're dealing with, you know, we're talking about some of our winter uh, policies and talking about equipment that's been broken down. And um, so it, um, definitely on that, the, there was several roads that were affected and every road wasn't like one area was affected, it was multiple areas. So it takes a lot of time with, um, the last month or so has been really uh, working with local us with the state of Vermont and FEMA. So, um, so like the, the gravel roads end of things comes through the FEMA fund. Um, so we've been working with, we've been working through the guidelines of FEMA to design. So if, if we would have, if we wanted to design it, by having a, a consultant do the work, we would have had to put that out to bid, then wait for them to design it, then go to the bid process, and then have the work done. So to cut that portion out of it, we, we did a lot of the design locally through the um, state of Vermont. So we were able to sa actually save time by doing that. And now we're in the process of, there's four total gravel roads bids, main bids, we did them in quadrants, so there's uh, the different quadrants, and each quadrant has half a dozen or so roads involved in them with multiple locations. So, so 
I understand that. I understand the process. Mm -hmm. I know what the process is. I just want the road to be maintained. When it continues to eat away and it gets narrower and narrower, that ain't about FEMA. That's about let's make the roads what's passable. That's all I'm asking. Right. I'm asking for maintenance. I'm asking that it's timely and that to think about ditching because they've taken all the ditches away. Right. And but the thing is, right, the ditches, the, so the problem is right now is all we can do is make it possible. We can't ditch it. We can't do any of that work at all. If we started doing work there, we'll lose our FEMA fund. I know all that. And then instead of us paying out, I don't know, throw a number out there, 50 grand that we have to retire, we might have to retire a million, you know, in the <laughs> towns. However, I will say that, you know, that I've been getting an update on the gravel roads and when we've been grading them. Granted, it has been a struggle because the weather has not cooperated. Uh, and in some cases, some of the roads were so bad that we even tried grading them in the rain just to appease people, which that didn't work out very well. So, um, you know, recently, uh, at the, so two weeks ago, we had graded Gilead, Wright Road, Trout Brook, and McIntosh Hill. So we had, those got graded two weeks ago. Of course not. Um, granted, we've had, you know, two, two storm events since then, too. So there's new erosion, there's new potholes, and, you know, so we're really doing our best. All I can do is, I'm sure Alan's sitting here tonight, and he'll make sure that tomorrow he takes a drive up Gilead to see um, what areas may or may not be uh, maintained a little better, and you know, go from there. It's, we're trying to get these bids out as fast as we can. We have, I just sat at a pre-construction this morning. We're gonna award one of them the first bid tonight. They all have different time frames, and it's tricky because we all want the work done now, but if we make the time restriction too much, you know, Bill can tell you, if we said all this work needs to be done in a month, you're gonna get one bidder, you know, maybe. You know, so you have to stretch it out there to, you know, August, September type time frame so that the contractors who are in the middle of their year have the ability to bid and, and do the work. So, um, as well as we're, you know, we're still in the process of um, doing a few more that have come out, um, so. It's, it's not an easy process, it's a slow process. Um, you know, Alan's got it noted, he'll make sure he takes a, a look at Gilead Brook, and while he's up there, I'm sure he'll look at the other ones up there to see what more so we can do. What about the phone calls? When you call somebody, it's a courtesy to call them back. Mm -hmm. I get the FEMA stuff. I just want to be able to get home at night and not have to panic when it's pouring so hard on Thursday night. Sure. To find out Friday that they're not even working. And it rained so hard that nobody was out there. I mean, I, I would recommend that, um, you know, my experience is, um, you know, even though we have a phone at the Public Works, it, it's not probably checked as often as we'd like it to be. Um, so I would say your first point of contact should be the town manager's office. And then if you can't get somebody, hold on, hold on. It was. Opportunity. Yeah. And, and you also have, it's very easy to find my number or anybody else's from the board and we'd be more than happy to discuss over the phone or go out and see you or, um, but, um, you know, I do appreciate, you know, everybody that has been affected. It's, it's not an easy process to go through. Um, and so the goal is to finish getting these jobs out, which we're awarding the first one tonight. There's four total gravel roads ones. We're working on the, and they all come with different sources of um, uh, funding. Um, we're working on the Camp Brook one now that we hope to have out in, I don't know, a week um, to do the paving and, and that portion of it. And then we have, we have a temporary bridge um, one that has to go out. And then we have one more, we'll call it a catch-all that will clean up the rest of the couple of smaller ones that weren't top priorities um, to do, so. Michelle, I have a question. Is it the entire Gilead, or are you up at the, up, are you at the, near the top? Fine. Near by? Near past by. Near past by. So do you feel like the bottom part of Gilead, the first part is all right, it's just, as you get further up? It's it? passable. It's our hill. They did take pictures, but pictures don't do justice. Okay. Because, I mean, I've stopped trying to take it, and I can't get the depth. Right. Um, yeah. So I, I just feel like 
they're not maintained. I guess I'm frustrated yeah. the most with the fact that I was told to call the town garage, not to call the town manager. Okay. And you're telling me the opposite. Well, what, and the town garage is not calling people back. No. So I have resorted to the town manager's office. Yeah, and that's fine. And but, the poor yeah. people are pacifying. And I feel like you're trying to pacify them. Well, what happens is sometimes we, get it. we don't always know the schedule for grading if we're not aware of what their schedule is. That's why sometimes we will at the town office say, call the town garage because we don't always know what their grading plan is or what. So we can't always be as much of assistance to you as we'd like to be. And that's why we sometimes send you to the highway to get, you know, to get answers. And uh, I'm sorry that nobody called you back. And, and certainly um, that's, that's not normal practice for us. So certainly normally somebody will call you back. But I know that the road foreman will definitely take a look at Gilead tomorrow. And especially now that we understand that it's, you know, further up on your part. We'll see what. Was that section have stakes with Lake Connor? No. It didn't. There is one stake at the foot of the hill, marking a culvert, but it's, it's a pretty deep drop. But yeah. where our washout is, oh. there's nothing. I mean, okay. I can show you the picture with the yeah. Well, if you go further, there might be another five, because all this was marked out. Further, I live at the end. <laughs> Yeah, because the stake, they stake it out. So basically, if you're in between two stakes, that part is bid out. But if you're not, then that's on the town. That's the right. portion of the, the highway. I don't know if there's a stake above me or not. It's at Wright's house. I don't usually go up there because that part of the hill is pretty much okay. Right. I was on the GPS all in. So I know what you're talking about. But I'm right across from Mitchell's mm -hmm. on that hill. And the, the worst washout is at the telephone call next to my property. So we have your number then at the town office? We should. Okay. So, I <laughs> actually, <laughs> so we have it because he, um, I sent him up on Gilead Thursday during the storm okay. to check Gilead. Right. And, um, that was two hours before it got the worst. Okay. So someone will call you tomorrow. It, it may, it's probably going to be me. I will call you tomorrow. Well, after the road foreman goes up and we talk about it, I will call you tomorrow. I will be at work. Okay. And, and, it, and you have, she has your work. I will call you tomorrow. And it's not that I'm trying to be a pain. I get the process. Yeah, no, I get it. I know disaster. I know emergency stuff. Yeah. I just think that you've got to get out there and look. Not, I don't know what buying looks like. I can see that it's a mess. I was actually at the Thursday night. I haven't had that. So, but our I hill is I didn't need your uh, message until what was it, uh, this morning. <laughs> when I wrote your number down, so I do have it on the hill. But I was out of it. So I was in that shop. I try not to be a pain, but it's, uh, you need to move on, I know, but it's not okay. Well, we'll make sure that somebody's in touch with you and, and we'll do it from there. Appreciate you coming Thank in tonight sharing that with us. Thank you. I just want to touch a few of the other things. I think our own dreams right now, and they're not all stable, and they're not all things. The other day, I spent three hours driving on their roads. All of this year, all of this stuff. All of this. I didn't go to Gilly. I found out that all of Whittier Road and up there. Whittier Road's got some spots. There's no stakes, there's no tape. I don't think there was tape or stakes on that whole road. I told my husband. Somebody drives down that road in the dark, somebody's going to get hurt. The holes are four and five feet deep up there. There's no excuse for that. How many months ago was this flood? And that's Whittier? Whittier. Yeah, well, I think the entire Whittier went out with in yeah. that bit that's going to war tonight. Yeah. I guess I'm kind of concerned that we don't have signs at the bottoms or tops of these roads to let people know. I could come out of Stockbridge, which, and I travel to Rutland every day, and I used to go up over the mountain and down Campbell Road, and then up. And I can't do that right now and feel like I'm not going to burn my car. So I'm adding that extra 10 mi miles to go to Rutland every day. And I really don't know what to talk about this But I think our roads are in the worst shape I've ever seen. But not to be, if I came down Whittier, there's not a sign there to let me know there's any damage. Somebody's going to come down there at 10 at night when it's dark and somebody's going to get hurt. I don't think we've ditched the road in three years. Five, ten years? Okay. There's no, no excuse for that. In front of my house, there's a culvert. 
that, and there's a new house on Camp Brook above my house, and that gravel every time it rains comes down that culvert's clog, it comes across the road, it's all over my lawn. My husband and I are getting too old to shovel all that gravel off our own lawn. <laughs> had a quick concern about um, Goodale Road, which is off of Gilead. And what has happened over the years is um, I've always been very grateful that the road got fixed because, you know, it is a town road, but it's basically my driveway. So I've never said anything, just being very grateful that it got fixed. But it's never, when I first bought the house, I had to drive my lawnmower up and down beside the driveway beside the road five times and now there is just like no room for error when you come down our driveway which is like a luge in the winter but I, I think that if it got repaired at least close to how it used to be it wouldn't be as big of a problem as far as getting washed out it's just you know because of the where the water wants to go after it goes under the bridge it just keeps eroding it and eroding it and um after Irene, we did fix the bank in front of our house. We had to pay $25,000 to fix the part in front of our house because there's a leach field and it's not the road. But that's always held ever since. You know, it was, it was done by Larry Pickett and it was worth it because that got big riprap and it just, you know, stayed. Whereas every time it, you know, like I can't even tell you. <laughs> I mean, the big one was Irene and this last one, but... Um, I hope that that can get fixed so that it's it's out further a little bit with a little room for error <laughs> when you come down the road. Is, is, was that road included in the? Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. I don't know. I'm gonna have to look at the bids. I, I I just wrote that down so I can look. I don't know. It's, not good. So there's, the sign is gone since um, Irene. It's never gotten put back up, which we do have the sign. That's the other thing I was going to ask if there's just one of those metal poles. We have the sign that says Good Hill Road um, after the Irene flood. And if, what it is is that it was an old road that used to go from Gilead over to Camp Brook. Okay. Um, there's a right away on our property. Um, I can look at the bids tomorrow. I can look at the packages to see if the deal is not jumping out of me. doesn't mean it's not in there because there's so many loans. But it's, it's the next one up after the uh, Pinellas Bridge. Yeah, let me take a look at the Delgado. Yeah, well, the Delgado Bridge, but I don't want to get the deal road. It's the one the Delgado, because that was where the box culvert is. That we can yeah. on the bridge, right? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I'll look at it and see what you I can call you. Yeah, thank you. And I did call the town office one day because <coughs> it, it, on the corner, I don't know that an emergency vehicle could get through there, the fire truck or the ambulance. Okay. And somebody was going to come look at it. I, maybe they looked at it and they decided that a fire truck or ambulance could make it up. Okay. But I, I just want to go on record is that I called and now I've said it again here is your in case number, my house burns down. Is, is your number in the book? <laughs> Is your number in the book so I can? Um, I, uh, I can tell you. Okay. Um, my home number is 234 9157. Thanks. All right. I'll give you a. And my work is 728 7710. Okay. We'll take a peek and then I'll give you a call to make sure we've got the whole thing. Is your house the only one on? Correct. Okay. I'll be able to tomorrow. Okay. I just want to say, well, I'm going to take it to the bids to see. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Any anybody else for the public comment inquiry? Yes. With the trash. Mm -hmm. Coming from there, and they have the farmers market right next to it. I mean, how much garbage has to go on the ground before somebody does something about it? Well, I mean, we, we've started the discussion of an ordinance. Of, an, uh, of a possible ordinance or what that might look like or how we would go about doing that. Obviously, an ordinance of that size would, would be done through town meeting day. So 
um, the process right now, and we've had to kind of not necessarily pause it, but we're we're working on some things behind the scenes. But we got the FEMA stuff trying to get in front of it right now. Um, is uh, we're, we're taking a look at some other communities that have done similar ordinances to see what the language might be. Um, you know, of course, there's it, you know it's a very slippery slope to open and on an ordinance book because an ordinance could start out as being um, you know something that we all can benefit from, but it can be Pandora's box to adding ordinances on top of ordinances and you know what could start off as a let's call it a trash ordinance could turn into a cut your lawn after 12 inches ordinance you know because it just allows people to build on that over time um, so it, it, our plan right now is to board anyways and is to complete is to complete the um, the information and make a suggestion that will be worn for town meeting day that would be voted on um, so that will allow everybody to vote on it and we'll select board to put together its own ordinance um, so that's kind of the process we're going right now um, so it'll be um, it's a carryover agenda item that we're going to work on between now and december before we have to have it done for january to put it and warn it so you'll see town meeting day that that'll that'll be one of the warnings that we will put out there will be a, a vote on an ordinance and what that ordinance may look like um, so I, I do you know i do understand and you know there were um you know i don't know three meetings ago maybe we started talking about it or two or three meetings ago and you know at that time we brought it up just because you know i had over 12 different instances of people pointing out different places that were just littered in trash or uh, unfortunately, it, it doesn't qualify as a, a health nuisance. Even if it were from around? It, it doesn't qualify as a health nu nuisance. So we've been through the state of Vermont with it. I, I called and talked to them um, directly. Um, so it's not a, you know, even like, you know, the Dylan's place that he got didn't qualify as a health nuisance. A health nuisance because it didn't affect uh, a budding landowner, you know, basically. So yeah, there's, 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 there's yeah. It's it's very yeah. Yeah, you know the responsibilities that we have as a say a health officer in, in a local municipality, are, it's not much power at all. Um, I mean, really, the a, a health nuisance or a health order would be more of a you know someone ate at a, an establishment and got sick from eating something you know that's kind of where you know that might turn into something but um you know when it gets to the individual basis um it's very tricky to what about environmental um if you catch something leaching into like a water um way there, there are things like that um but again it, you would think you would think it would be open and shut very right. easy but then once you start looking through the books and the powers and talking to the state, your hands are tied for majority of it, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, being that I was, you know, luckily to be deputized as uh, helping out the, the town health officer, um, it, it really, at the end of the day, it's kind of a powerless job. Um, really what we do is go out and document um, complaints. And I will say that, you know, all the complaints I've documented, I, haven't been able to do a single thing about any of them. Um, all you can do is is give information to the owners that are affected to you know seek alternative you know because there's always other behind the scenes things going on you know um, you know might be a tenant land owner dispute or or something else you know somebody that wants to buy that piece of property you know there's always something going on but um, you can give them information on how they could go about whatever contacting a lawyer or contacting <coughs> someone at the state. They're very, you know, like trash being on people's houses and stuff. There's, there's nothing we've gone down that road, and unfortunately, there's not much we can do about it. So that's, and the only thing we could do as a town, if we had ordinance, is, you know, we could hold people to an ordinance. That's, you know, and then you could enforce it, which then you would have to have an enforcement officer that would 
would enforce instances of that. Um, but we don't have we don't have the power or the authority to do that. Well, I mean, the county is working with town manager. Well, they were free to all money up by the county of the county manager. They wouldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. when, I know in Randolph one time, there was a person's house that was really bad in the area that was calling that. And the neighbors did go over and ask if they could clean it out, and the person did let them. Mm -hmm. I don't you know. I, I'm not that anybody wants to do that, but it might be a matter of not afford, having the money to pay for it to go to the dump. Right. It's really tricky, even if you have you know somebody living in those quarters. It's you know you get into like the order type individuals, and it's not it's not cut and dry that they can be you know. Removed or no, no. She, they they asked the person, "Can we paint your yeah. garage for That person said it yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's a trick. It's a tricky one. So that's pretty much what we had come up with the board is not necessarily that we wanted to move forward with the ordinance. It was that's an option that's on the table that maybe we could see forward doing something about it. But has anybody asked them for that or not? Um, there's multiple houses. <laughs> people have, that have that um, there's multiple houses that have been brought to our attention. So I don't know, but you're right. I, mean, I did suggest that to someone. I said, you know, maybe you could not, maybe you could help them out. Maybe there's an issue there and they need some assistance. But that hasn't been tried yet. I don't know. They didn't call back, <laughs> so I, I don't know. I know everybody, uh, not you guys, but I'll, I'll everybody that calls you, they want to make it somebody else's problem. Yeah, but if you're the one that's the most affected, if, you know, the neighbor. Yeah. If they go over and just say, what the heck, what, why is this happening? Yeah, yeah. can I help you? That's true. Yeah. So that's a great point. That's a great point. You're right. Absolutely. Or even chat with the landlord. In this particular case, the Joe's citing. You know, talk with the landlord. Uh, yeah. You know, have okay. see if there's some influence there to be had. Right. Is anything else? Anybody? Not on the agenda, and then we'll move forward. Okay. Well, thank you for bringing up everything. I'm. Um, you know, just to clarify that um, that you'll yeah. be used up to threes. Yeah. We'll take care of the next meeting. Um, and then uh, Michelle and Lisa, you'll be followed up with tomorrow, correct? Yep. Um, and we will continue to work on um, the information for a possible ordinance to put into the town meeting day um, to be voted, voted upon by the taxpayers, and then you know, we'll go from there. Um, so. All right, so we have. Our discussion uh, with the road crew tonight. So we wanted to go through, start, you know, really what we wanted to do was, you know, we got winter and summer maintenance, you know. We don't want to, you know, first of all, we don't want to adopt any policies or uh, we're not going to tell you how to do your job. I, I think what we were looking to do was just kind of an open session, you know, uh, you guys with us. You know, us kind of putting forward what, um, you know, a budget end of things and kind of what we're looking or would like to see. And then really just kind of let you guys take the ball and figure out how to do this. So, um, you know, we, we did go through a pretty nasty winter, as you all know. Um, you know, it was probably one of the roughest ones that we've had in quite some time with the amount of snowfall and, and maintenance of roads. Um, and, you know, uh, some of the big things that came to light is just, uh, you know, we hope that these winters are far and few in between, but um, if they're not, then we need to make sure that we're um, starting to put together a, a best practice um, to, uh, to address our budgets and to make roads safe and passable. And, uh, so uh, some of the backdrop on it is, you know, we. We overspent our, our winter maintenance by $130,000, um, which is quite a bit of money in a town of this size. Um, $130,000 if you know we were able to make up a lot of that in other areas this year, so we weren't you know directly affected by $130,000. Um, 
but one hundred and thirty thousand dollars is is about six and a half cents on the tax rate. If we kind of put it into perspective, so that's that's a big chunk of money. Um, so I guess some of the some of the ideas that we had kind of kicked around as a board, and feel free anybody to chip in was. Uh, you know, we had, we had some, the main factors that kind of hit the bottom line this year was um, uh, was material. You know, tougher winter, more material. Obviously, the way it works. Um, but um, you know, we keep hearing you know salt went up 15 percent last year. I've already heard it's going to take another jump this coming winter. Um, so, uh, and looking back on our policy, we do have you know our policy. You know, we don't have a, a um, fair roads policy in Bethel. Um, I know we do or have done a really good job of kind of creating in some ways, you know, a pretty bear road policy, but we don't have one. Um, so I guess some of the uh, comments from the board here is how can we how can we shift some of the expensive material to some of the floor uh, price material? So. You know, how much of the salt can we switch? Can we switch off the salt and on the sand? Uh, and kind of, and how would you guys use the best practice to do that? So we're not going to come here as a board and tell you, okay, well we want that road salted and that one sand, and that one salted and that one sand. But we're saying is, you know, if we could take our salt budget, cut it in half, and pick up more sand on the other end that's cheaper. Uh, you know, could we put together a best practice of certain roads that we would use just sand, just salt? It's not saying that if Jason goes to get a load of, uh, you know, sand and he's using it and says, geez, you know, we really need some salt, it doesn't mean that we can't use it. Just kind of, you know, I, I know myself, if I was plowing the road and I got the option of salt or sand, I'd be loading up salt every time, right? It's easier to work with, you know. Um, um, some of the other things that kind of come across is, uh, and we're seeing it with, you know, we've had a lot of equipment down that costs uh, quite a bit of money. Our equipment maintenance budget was, you know, you've seen that now, it was, you know, double almost what that was wanted. So again, you know, some of that comes with a, uh, a rougher winter than normal, and other, others of it comes with, you know, are we using the right tools for the right job, you know. And, and currently we have a truck that is down. You know, one ton truck that that we're hoping to uh, you know replace. But I guess the question at this point is, what do we replace it with? You know, I mean, you know, do we replace it with another one ton and do the same applications and only get three or four years out of it, or do we buy a bigger truck, or you know, or do we move one truck from this road to plow in this route, you know, type deal? So, um, so I guess what we're kind of looking um, for the public works personnel to do is really to kind of, for us to kind of tell you what we'd like to see um, or where we'd like to get to as a goal and have you uh, folks internally get together and start brainstorming on how can we do this, you know, what can we really do, what can't we do, um, and if we are going to do this, what do we need to do the work with, you know, um, so those were kind of our I think the biggest things on the winter kind of things. Does anybody have anything winter-wise? Well, we, we did get lucky this year, like I was saying, with, you know, we, Teresa did an excellent job of collecting back taxes and penalties and interest from people that was able to uh, absorb a lot of that. But, you know, we're doing a good job of eating through that, so there's going to be a time when we're not going to be collecting that. Um, so. I guess the question would be, uh, um, if you went to look at it and we did a, we did a great, great job this year on our roads, maybe we look at scaling back the fact that the, this road is like Interstate 89 all the time. I mean, it, it was great, but maybe we can't afford to have it look like that all the time. Uh, and I don't know how you know, what percentage of when and where and whatever, but I just think we, we did a very good job with people and if they want to do that, then they got to go to the polls and polls of 
to phone number one. We don't. We're not going to get that. So when we think about the plan, maybe there's, okay, this is plan A, which is like done. We're going to ship some material now. Plan B may be, okay, we're still going to ship some material now, but we're not going to plow 20 hours a day. Or whatever. I don't know those numbers, but just look at it. Get closer to the, how is it worded? Safe roads rather than basic bare roads. And, you know, and if you've got to be going at safe roads at a safe speed, okay, our roads don't have to be ready for 50 mile an hour at all the time. You know, when it's snowing, when it's slippery, maybe you got to slow down 25 or 20. I think some of what the board is also hoping to do is, and thank you, Teresa and Alan, for putting that in the language, because I think that gives us a backbone to then say to the town to back you guys. This is our policy. They're following the policy. You know, we've talked about it. To be to just be all here having this conversation gives any one of us the ability to back you guys when somebody does complain, right? And so we're going through that process. And I think that we had a two winters ago there were a lot more complaints, and then this winter was great. The maintenance was, you know, I would say superb and above above that average. And so now we're looking to find that balance, but not have the heat just fall on you guys constantly, you know, to, to let you set that policy and then have it written down so we can expect what it is. So I think that's a lot of what we're hoping to accomplish here, and we started it with this document, which is great. And, and we, you know, and we hope to, you know, we've been kind of talking about wanting to finalize something by, you know, the end of July, uh, 1st of August at the latest. Just so that we have enough time to be able to get that information out to the public of, you know, this is what you can expect to see this winter. Uh, this is the type of maintenance that will be going on, um, you know, so that they can prepare for it. And then, like, you know, I mean, it, um, you know, again, just like the state of Vermont, we don't have a bare room policy, but yet, you know, we put a lot of work and effort into making it a bare room, right? And, you know, the state of Vermont was $8 million over their winter budget. Um, you know, we were 130 over ours, so I mean, it, it, you know, a lot of money for us and a lot of money for the state of Vermont, so. Um. So, you guys, I gave, so, I, Alan, you guys have all read this, right? Morgan gave me some comments, and so I wonder if we should give it back to you guys, and maybe you could, there was obviously some spaces in there, so some stuff that needs to be fine-tuned. And we can certainly get together and fine tune it. And again, it's not a policy, it's just guidelines because you all, you know, need to be able to have the freedom to do the job. And this was just, I took the state of Vermont and like Windsor's maybe and kind of you know, for something. So Morgan gave me some comments on his that he read and did his, so I'll make those edits and, and, um, and get it back to you. And then um, I know that was something that. <coughs> Now you mentioned that it would be nice to have something like that for people to, to see, um, so that we could refer them to that, like at the office, and that sort of thing. Well, the other part of it too is the equipment side. <coughs> what we yeah. need to do to get you guys the tools that you need to do the job right. You know, we got, you know, you gave, you put together these sheets for us with all the needs of the existing equipment, but and then we also need to decide what piece we're going to try to replace that one time. With. Probably sooner rather than later, depending on how long it's going to take to get it outfitted and, and all the things that have to go along with that. Yeah, that was the thing that and you can see that Alan, you know, had done, and to kind of let you know. Obviously, one of the concerns right now is the fact that they have a vehicle that they're not able to drive, and so you know, it's not part of any of their job descriptions that they need to provide a vehicle to go look at the roads with, and so that wasn't. You know any of their hiring letters, and um, so I, there's certainly a discussion to be had about that. You know about whether you need two vehicles. Do you need a vehicle to to do whatever that's the capacity of whatever route that is going to do, which could be maybe bigger than what they have now, or you know I don't know what that vehicle is. Then you do also need a smaller vehicle that is for use for training and for checking the roads, and maybe they can put chainsaws and cones and you know something like that that's smaller that they can if somebody gets called in 
uh, let's use AJ. AJ gets called in and he has to go, you know, trim trees. He can go to the town garage, park his vehicle, pick up his equipped, you know, something else, town vehicle, and then, you know, go to do that. Have you guys given that any sort of thought? Yeah, so. I mean, it was one that Greg had, you know, shown us at the last select board meeting, just right. a, a suggestion, you know, of, a, of, a, of the vehicle. Right, and I think this, this that wasn't it though, right? Was, that wasn't it, the vehicle that was at the line. No, this is something right. else, like a smaller vehicle. Yeah, sure. Like, a used, used pickup. Yeah, something right. like, used, you know, something yeah. like what Morgan has, uh, you know, for doing uh, around the town. Or even smaller, and then just, you know. Yeah, could be a, could something be a, you can just time. Yeah, yeah, something just for you know, the library, yeah, 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 yeah. or whatever. And is that something that would be nice for you guys to have to, if you were coming in to check the roads and on your own vehicle or, I mean, trainings or whatever. I know there was a, a comment about that because they obviously have a vehicle that's parked right now. Is there any trading value on that 3500? Uh, Greg was looking into it uh, a year ago. I believe it was forty-five thousand. Um, is that with the crap thing? And this year, when we just had a quote done, um, I never did see the what they call back. I'm not sure. I didn't see that either. You didn't get that estimate back, no. so we could call someone. Follow and I think we'll kind of shut that down and see more. For the trade and for a commercial size vehicle. Uh -huh. They don't have them over at Red Green, so okay. kind of got shuffled back over G Stone and this and that. She never did give up half the number. Okay, well, I didn't know where that ended up. Can you sell that 55, 550 outright? Just depending on where you want to buy it?
you know, and again, this isn't a policy. It's just it's this a it's a maintenance a plan schedule, whatever you want to call it. Um, it kind of allows you you guys to understand, you know, the organized routes that you have and what you're gonna try to accomplish on them, and the pieces of equipment needed to do do that work uh, within our means. You know, I mean, we obviously know that there is one vehicle we're gonna have to replace. The only thing is, at this point, we don't really exactly know what size that is, right? And, you know, so it's like I hate to buy an undersized truck and right. then know that we need to buy a, a larger one, you know. And we also know we're in a real tight squeeze here because yeah. we're not going to be able to order something tomorrow and then have yeah. it turned right around before hopefully before snow flies. So if for the next select board meeting, if in the next two weeks we can get together hash out the guidelines and get you a group recommendation mm -hmm. on what to purchase, <clears throat> we could make that an actionable item for next time. I think we definitely could have it as a discussion point mm -hmm. and, and okay. see if that, if you know, if all of our ducks in a row. We're almost too late to hit this, this snow season with a, with a brand new truck. Right, exactly. Out there. But, well, and that's, mm -hmm. right, and we, for, exactly. So if they're too, if they're already running out of time, so that, we can certainly hash it. I have no problem doing this, hashing this out. But, you know, Alan wants it. I'm happy to do that. I just want to make sure that we, we need to do something because we have one vehicle that can't be operated. We obviously need to do something to figure out how we're going to get through the winter. So I'm just, I, I guess what I'm trying to do is to try to keep this in forward momentum. Yes, because it needs to be, they need an answer. Have you guys taken a ride at the Stockbridge and looked at their truck? I'm sorry? Have you looked at Stockbridge small truck? Uh, it's uh, not Stockbridge, no. I, I drove by it the other day and I stopped and looked at it just because it's, uh, it's like Doug's truck, only all the running gears like Doug's truck and then shrink it three feet. It's a little profile. Yeah, it's a little profile that I presented. And there's actually a bell date. I was to see what the deal tomorrow, the whole day in February. Yeah, I, I was gonna say if you don't have it ordered like in the first of March. Yeah, it's always off. Although the one that I did find uh, from Ford to uh, International, uh, International has two show trucks that are already built. Um, that are available, and they're kind of on hold, so to speak. Flip side. I'm sorry. Flip side. I have to look at all the stats. So I, I think. I guess what I'm looking for is kind of two prongs. So one would be for the Public Works Department to uh, to give us a a maintenance document of how we plan on doing our maintenance of the roofs and what is our equipment that we need to do that within reason and how can we conserve material, you know, the salt versus the sand, and then. And then you, and then, and then the department to work with Therese on the budget end of things on how can we, what would be a proposal that you could bring forward the board on, uh, you know, trading in the, the one time, uh, getting a temporary truck, and then this is the size truck that we think we'll need, and this is the time frame in which we can get it type deal. I, I think that would be helpful, um, and then Therese can kind of give us some background on. This is how it would line up in our equipment um, program um, or equipment fund, and you know what that would look like. On because obviously, if we purchase something, something else is going to have to get pushed back. Yeah, right? we'll have to. You know, unless we have So, but what does that look like? Does that mean that we have to push back a greater another year, or, this, or how does that look? Or, right. or the replacement schedule of other pieces. Well, also, how does it tie in with? These items too. No, some of these are, you know, items that need to be addressed. Right. So, so that, that's a whole budget thing on the side here. And I think if you're going to plan, if you would by some chance to plan on two vehicles, we've already got to park in something outside. What? We don't, we don't. We don't like parking. I don't like us parking stuff outside. We're already parking something outside. So if you get two vehicles instead of one, now you got two pieces you're going to be parking outside. So think about that, how, how you can make that work. 
Unless you trade one. <coughs> you right. trade one in it for two of you. You already got, you already got one vehicle outside. And if you get another one, right, a pickup and uh, another truck, that's two. You know, so now you've got two pieces outside. So I would be concerned about that. If there's a way to figure that out. So there are vehicles outside. I have a suggestion, which probably they don't want to shoot me from across the room, but um, you know how there's traffic cams on the interstate that you can look and see if you want to drive on the road or not? <clears throat> I was wondering if there could be something set up where, and I don't know how complex this would be, but they could say um, Camp Brook was plowed from here to here at this time. You know, like there could be an update so that somebody could go on the town website and see what the schedule was of when it was plowed and when it might get plowed again. And that it was salt at this time, so the next time it's probably going to be sand. Something like sort of public's aware. Yeah, I, I think that might it, be it's little. not exactly what you're looking for, but um, with this maintenance schedule, <clears throat> the idea behind it is to <clears throat> is to establish our our um, plowing routes, and you know they they know that they start from here and end here, and that route might take them. I don't know. Throwing up four hours of plow from here yeah. to there, and and then we're going to talk about the material that in which we're going to use. So, you know, one thing you know that probably will come out of this is, you know, where Camp Brook gets salted all the way up through, it might not get salted all the way up through. Right. It might get sanded all the way up through, and then in certain instances where we need salt because it's freezing rain or something, then we can yeah. then we can put salt or something. Okay. But uh, so those are the things. And then we're going to get that information to the public, so we can say, you know, if you're on whatever, we'll call it whatever group, uh, you know, the plow is usually over a course of eight hours, and, you know, it'll be sanded, you know, so that we want to be able to get the taxpayers um, some time to um, get ready for the winter cut, you know, and, you know, and the only reason why I say that is, you know, years ago, you know, my family lived on a, a back road, and I can tell you that we had, um, you know, the we had not only snow tires, but they were studded. You know, yeah. you know, and that was back in the days where Dad had a rear wheel driven yeah. vehicle. We used to put the kitty litter in the trunk. You know, whole nine yards of traction, and it just seems like nowadays you have somebody that lives way up out of the way. They don't even have four wheel drive. They have. It's just an average car with all season tires on it and they expect that that road's going to be plowed perfectly so they can get out and some of the you know some of the reasons of living off the grid a little bit is that you got to have four wheel drive or all wheel drive you want you got to have winter tires so and and what's happening right now is we're on the town's end of things is we are uh, taking that responsibility of getting it to a bare road and it's costing us a lot of money, um, you know, a substantial amount of money, especially if you go through a winter like we just had. Now, let's hope that that winter is only every 10 years, but if we have another one next year, we're not prepared for that. So, um, so the idea behind it is once we get this figured out, we'll, I know we've been using Facebook a lot more to try to give updates on when something might be graded or um, when we need cars moved to to do a snow removal in the downtown type thing. So I think what we're gonna be looking to do is probably post something on the website showing these will be the maintenance routes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you know, fair warning people that that's what's gonna happen. And that's why we wanna do it by the end of July so that, you know, it gives you four months to get ready. Um, and, and, and then it'll be a teaching process. So we'll see how the winter goes, make some adjustments to that and go from there. Yes. So I just have a suggestion while you're planning all that, take into account that if you're going to do a road, some of those roads have hills on them and some of those hills are very, very steep. And so you need to be able to pay, to know that people need to work and they need to get out. I slid down my hill sideways last winter. It scared the crap out of me. And I said, if I'm going off into a or something, I need a bigger vehicle. I have studded snow tires, four studded snow tires. Right. And so I just, just
just take into account that the roads that you're going to do, you've got to remember that some of us take heed to that stuff. But we live on a hill that's pretty steep. And, and the flat is the flat, and you can get away, but I can't get down. I usually get home. can always get down. I just want to take it into account. No, I, I mean, things have changed a lot. I mean, I, I remember riding the school bus to school. Yes. And actually helping the school bus driver put the chains on the bus. I mean, exactly. that was the way things went. And now they have auto chains and they don't even use them. Like, you know, it's like, you know, they can just flick a switch and put the chains on. So. Yeah, but it doesn't always work. Yeah, we're trying to. It's kind of. I just want to go to work in the morning and come home at night. Right. It came out on my phone. I didn't even sign up for it. All of a sudden, you have to do it for a day. <laughs> so, are, are we on the right track with this? Do you have a negative I, feedback? I think so. Feedback? I mean, are we positive? Are we, are we in the right ballpark with this? Okay. I think I think so. I mean, you know, maybe in some cases, you might put a little too much detail into it. I mean, yeah, it's not our, again, we're not, this is, is not, you know, this is not something that, once Alan has this, and I go out and say, Alan, you said you were not putting salt on this road. Like, right. what are you doing? You know, this is just, it's something so that if, let's say, Alan's sick for a week, everybody picks up and they know exactly what, you know, sand or, you know, we use sand first, and then we use salt if we need it, or, or we use salt in this area, you know what I mean. Um, and, you know, these are our recommended plow schedules on times, or this is what's going to trigger us to go out there and do it, you know. Deal. And then, how can we better utilize our equipment so that we don't have as many breakdowns? And what does that piece of equipment look like? And how does that work into our budget? And then we'll have to make the decisions on what we can purchase when and how we'll do it, you know? So, um, because it makes it easier if we have something than if we get any comments um, from the taxpayers, then we, you know. Therese can say, you know, oh, you know, you know, that the reason why your road hasn't been plowed is because it takes, you know, it takes Doug four hours to do it and he's on hour two and a half and looks like he'll probably be there an hour, you know, you know, something like that. Or, or you know, as, as stated in the meeting, you know, we're no longer salting unless we need to, you know, we sand through there now, you know, um, that kind of stuff. So. So since the whole department is here, I'm not sure, is there anything that you guys want to talk to the board about? Or, I mean, you know, they're all here, so maybe they have some considerations, concerns. I don't really know. Okay. Um, my only concern is the vehicle and the water. Yeah, that has got to be good. It's a little The longer we take to step the matter, the longer we're going to do a body. So that yeah, has got to get done. Well, I would say, you know, it's not before the snow falls. Because if you're looking for this guy, kind of, there are some companies out here that have these show vehicles that we watch and purchase, mm -hmm. but then we just already prepared everything else. But when I talked to one of the guys from International, one of their attendants, he said, well, right now, he's got two, three towns already in the in the truck. So if he's got one time, or he's going to turn it in or whatever, somebody else is saying, but we got to make sure that those vehicles get expressed that one time if we purchase from the Ford, Dodge, or whatever. Somebody has to get on the ball and put I agree. So we'll have to, we'll look at our schedules for about next week and we'll pick a time that works for you guys and we'll get together and we can, I mean, if we have a good start on this, then we can get, if, you know, we can make any changes to this that we need and, and go through this and talk about routes and whether or not, you know, if you all are making the decision together, is it, you know, do you need to change a route to get this vehicle, at, you know, and, you know, route, route length and this and that, you know what you do it. So, but we can do that because I, I agree, we need to, this needs to come out on the next but agenda. You're right. So, so still trying to purchase another vehicle, you're really the one trying to use all that money that is traded in, get it down on it. <clears throat> get it on that one time or get it on that, that particular vehicle for when. Right now, and stuff like that, I make mean, sure it's, it's an inconvenience, but we still got the big truck we can use if we need to use. So they can still get on the road. There's some places that's really tight, it's kind of scary, you might slide off. 
But there's other areas too where we can't put down the lawn to be able to grow. So, so it sounds like we definitely need to get together and get this and make, for you guys to come to a consensus and make a, a group recommendation about what you think is the best piece of equipment and put it on the next agenda, which is July 8th. So we'll, we'll definitely we'll do it. We're doing it. By the amount of hours these guys are putting in on some of the storms, uh -huh. there's no way that one of those guys can take on that fourth round. You know what I mean? Without a truck to do it. Right, we exactly. Used to three trucks. Huh? Exactly. We used to do it with three big trucks. Doug, my members, he worked there. Mm -hmm. We used to do it. It would be tough, but it, it, it has to be done. Job is done, doesn't it? Well, let's focus on trying to get, we'll get together, we'll work out a schedule that works for you guys. I can. I'll make my schedule work to yours and we'll get through this and we'll get it through the, on the July 8th. We're making, you're making a group recommendation on the next vehicle. Okay. Is so, it worth finding another F550 just to put the wing cloud, all the equipment you have on that truck, on the new truck? If, Is it cost if, if, if we get the, with the wing, it would be a, a lot easier. It makes the road, we can move the snow a little bit more out of the way instead of just putting it on the side of the road and get it off the road would make it a little bit more convenient. But I mean, if you bought another F-550, would all that stuff be transferable to the new truck? Mm, no, that's the way that vehicle is right now. A lot of it needs to be upgraded, so your sanding units and plow, it, it all be. Yeah. I mean, we were looking at a, and, and that's kind of the reason, well, we had been wanting to have this conversation for a little bit of time and then what happened. So, um, but you know, right now to replace that vehicle the way it is, it's like $118,000. So, you know, um, you know what the, the board had talked about last time is, you know, we don't want to just go out and replace a $118,000 piece of equipment not knowing exactly how that fits into the, to what we're doing. Because we do know that that piece of equipment in the past has been undersized for what it was doing. And, and maybe some of the reasons why it is in the condition it is in because of the type of maintenance of work it was doing. So we don't want to get in that situation again where, you know, a vehicle maybe that should make it five years is only three or four, you know. So we want to uh, make sure in this case that, you know, you all figure out the maintenance schedule and, and what is the right tool to do the job within reason and how, and then working with Therese is how, how how we can move forward with that. Um, and then and then we will build our budget around that. So, you know. Um, and, and then obviously we, we want to continue to have the discussions on it, you know, every once in a while I invite you all back in or just Alan or whoever. Um, and then as things go, you know, making improvements obviously to it as we get feedback. Um, and then the goal uh, would be, you know, we probably won't have a place this year, but the goal is between now and, you know, through winter is to come up with the same type of plan, but for the spring, summer, fall, you know, maintenance. So maybe, you know, the routes for uh, grading and when things get done. And because if we can put that out there to the public, it answers a lot of the questions that we get on when's my road getting plowed or, or, or graded. Um, uh, type deals so we can kind of get out in front of those a little bit. Um, and I, you know, I appreciate you guys' all hard work. Um, you know, we, we are playing catch up and we probably will play catch up all summer because we're behind from winter. And not only we're behind on winter because of breakdowns and things like that, but then we had the, the flood event that just kind of uh, really put us behind. So I uh, appreciate all your hard work and Work, work with Teresa to get us that proposal and um, if Teresa if you can give it to us as early as you can um, mm -hmm. then we can have a lot more eyes on it and hopefully be ready to act on it or amend it and act on it or whatever at the next board meeting. So. That sounds good. Can I say one thing about the road? I think the camp road should be marked so these tractor trailers don't go over the mountains. I don't know how many times at our house at nighttime we've gotten a call because some tractor trailer stuck up on the middle of the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. Where maybe there was a sign at the bottom of the brook. I think there is one on the Rochester side. But they get hung up on that mountain with their ice 
Well, the good okay. news is they'll be closed all winter. Rochester's closed and they're not going to be done for like a year. <coughs> so they're closed. So what we're trying to get it, like Google Maps, so it stops using it and it gets a detour. But I don't know who you talk to to get that done. But they're still totally using it though. It, I know. The sign's not working because I know. trucks are still going up there and then 20 minutes later you see them come back down. I know. And then we, and I actually spoke to Bruce Newell and we were talking about it. But So we're hoping is by it being closed for that period of time, it definitely breaks people up that. And they did have a sign. I guess part of their sign package was they could have got one of those big electronic signs, but they chose not to rent one. But, um, but, um, Certainly, I'm with you. I, I don't think they should be up there either. So why don't we put the close sign on the road and let the cars going up the mountain go around? I mean, I know you're thinking maybe an accident, yeah. but it would slow people down. Yeah. The first three months of the flood, the first couple months, we had the road close sign on the side of the road on the opposite side of the road. Yeah. So the traffic coming down the road that should have been able to flow freely had to come over into the other lane. Where the stop, where the road close sign should be. Yeah, I'll ask first month because we're going to be doing that work because it's the you know the federal highway. Mm -hmm. But but we were actually I met with today, kind of talked a little bit about that, and he was the one who told me that it's going to be closed for a year for them. So mm -hmm. I thought, well, it's good for us because absolutely, I, I agree, we shouldn't be going up over there. But I'll talk to Chris about some additional <coughs> signage. So I have something we can sign that we haven't got used yet. It's folded shut, as you probably noticed. It looks like a triangle right now, but it actually states. Uh, Extremely icy conditions ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, next six miles, which covers our end up to the top of the down road. And then it's got two orange flags that I'll be posted on it also. But I'm hoping that that'll cut down a lot of uh, vehicles without uh, proper tires and a lot of call outs. And yeah, we can, we can, you know, maybe Therese, me and she's um, been in contact with the district daily yeah. right now, plus the FEMA stuff. Maybe you can. Um, Maybe you can just touch base with them to see if what what authority we may or may not have on you know if we wanted to post that road and say no trucks yeah. you know or, it's posted they, for twenty four hours yeah. no but I you know what could we do with with that right now because I, I don't know with the funding schedule if you know yeah, with having some you know I don't know either. being being that it is a grant approved road you know can we do that. Or well, if we did that, we would lose our funding, you know. Yeah, I think Joanne's right, but I'll reach out to Chris Bump and find out what we can do if we can post it for no truck. That would you. I think that makes total sense. And, and then again, it's going to be closed. I'm actually hoping that somehow the powers of me that manage Google can well, stop putting people through there. And, and we try, you know, going through some state agency that we had contact with to try to get it, but it's trying to get well, it off there. Because it keeps sending people that way, but I'm with you. I mean, I've come down over the mountain coming from work. And met trucks in the middle of the mountain where the mountain's not been met back. Yeah. If they've been up, they maintain it. It's true. And I'm not sliding down it, but they can't make it up the mountain. Yeah. You talk to Chris Bump, she's going to take that section over. Well, yeah, oh, he laughed that. in my face when I mentioned that. So, yeah, I did. I tried to get Chris to take it back. It used to be there. So. Well, they gave it to us. Yeah, no. so we tried. Well, they've been trying to get trucks not to travel up the notch road on 108 for years, and that no. doesn't ever work. You hear, you hear once a week or every other week a truck that got stuck in there trying to find it. And, and those have big flashing lights that say don't go. On a Rochester side, they get a summons in there over 44,000 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's like. What I was told was the state police doesn't want to do their homework. Yeah. Well, we can, we can, it means we are, we're catching up with, with uh, that right now. Um, Again, it's, it's a weird thing because that road specifically has different funding sources than other roads that we have. So like in this whole thing that we're doing right now, all the gravel roads are under the FEMA and Camp Brook itself is under federal highway and state, which for us was good because they're going to pick up 100% of that road. Uh, where the FEMA sections, we have to do our, you know, 85 or 90% split on it. Of course, when you accept funding like that, it comes with strings too. So we'll find out what we can or can't do and, and see see if there's anything better we can do for the winter time up there. So. Will that timing allow for some sort of blinking sign that gives information like? I don't know. That, that would be something to ask the I mean, yeah. the state. Yeah, that four wheel drive and ch yeah. or chains limitations on certain roads like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll ask. storms. Yeah. 
I mean, maybe at certain times of the year we can post a you know, close to trucks or something, you know, sign. Of course, the other thing is, is then you got to enforce it, right? So then it becomes a... No, but you, I mean, the trucks that I've seen, they get stuck there, have summer tires on, they've got, you know, yeah. Tennessee plates or something. Mm -hmm. You know, they just, maybe if they had a little information where they could turn around. They know. But the challenge is at the very bottom, and it's so boring the extreme nice conditions are at that. But they got to read it. I think if we for yeah. GPS stop putting them over the top Sorry. and actually put them around like detour them, if we if that happened, I think you'd see a huge slowdown. Yeah. And and that if they're Google Maps, we put them around. Mm -hmm. So, um, but and then I'm hoping that by being closed, you know, garages mm -hmm. closed, we can close for you that link. Right. Help us. But um, if you close it long enough, when the Google vehicle comes around, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Well, thanks. I guess we'll I'll touch base with you guys, and we'll make a plan for picking up vehicle together and and get this going. So I'll find a room, talk to you tomorrow, and look at the schedule. Sounds good. Thank you all for coming in. Great. Just, I'd like to thank you guys. Uh, the storm that you know hit in April, we were marooned, and you guys had us out you know, like half a day. I don't, I don't know how often you guys get a pat on the back. But, <laughs> that was serious good work on your part. Yeah. Thank you. Great, great committee. So you're sitting in the far back. Hi. So we had we had talked, and I want to say the last time you guys were here was either late March or early April. And we had at that time at that time we were talking about. Phasing of, of work uh, and the skate park uh, was specific. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we were talking about um, how kind of the end of May was going to be kind of your do or die. You know, you were looking for one other grant to see if you could put this, you know, phasing of the skate park in, um, or or if it wasn't going to work, then we were going to go with plan B and, and move in a different direction and shelf that for a period of time. Um, and then we would check back, um, you know, June and uh, see where you're at. So, so you guys are here tonight. So, so just uh, maybe just update us on, on uh, what's been going on uh, in regards to the phasing, if that's the skate park or something else. And, um, uh, what that might look like and what maybe the time frame looks like right now. Yep. So I've been working a little bit with a, a contractor named Michael Parker. He built a few skate parks and he's the only one who's going to be close to our price window. Like everyone else will be probably one and a half to two times the square foot price. He's Vermont. Uh, the guy from Hardway. Uh, he knows what he's doing. He read it in the 11 park. Um, quality work. Um, so we're, we're, we're working with him right now. Um, he's got this in hand. He's hoping to get estimates to me by tonight. That hasn't happened yet. Uh, but the, the swag estimate that he threw at me was he could do one of these two, maybe, for the funding that we have available um, with the in-kind going, going with that puzzle. Um, as far as the bill goes, uh, he's not available until mid-October, and that might be too late for a four if we get to know early. Um, but what he did suggest, um, in order to use up our, our Tony Hawk Foundation uh, grant that has been used this year, um, we could use some site prep. We could put a foot of crushed stone uh, down on this, the area that we'll be working with uh, and maybe start some of the uh, terrain modeling. Uh, you had very specific recommendations for the materials. I'll get to, to that in a little bit. But we, we would do that tail end of this summer. 
and then once it's warm enough to pour uh, next spring, he could um, he could start in on that. So the intent, if no, none of our funding changed and he could pull off one of these two, we would pour one of these two next spring in 2020. And then if we could raise some additional funds, we might do another pour the following spring. So you said the Tony Hawk grant has to be used by when? I believe it's this year. And that's $5,000, yes. right? Yeah, this, I but wasn't sure. If we, if we bought a pile of crushed stone, you know, that could that could chew that up in our area. Um, Shane, do you know what the, the final number is? So anybody know the final number of what the budget is? Because it, it, there was a lot of confusion for a period of time. I just Ball, ballpark 65, including the income. Okay. I believe we were a lot of 50K. 50,000, yeah, you're right. And then another five from Tony Hawk, and then somewhere around 10 of the kind of work for equipment and operators from the actual right. ballpark. And we had the funding, so that was in the We put in some skirt drain if we needed it on the uphill side, but you know, the ridge side. We recommended three gates crushed the ledge um, for the terrain. It would be like stay mad or sure pack or some pack, you know, that kind of stuff. It still drains well, but it's very flammable, very packable, but it still has some drainage quality to it. Um, and then it'd be four inches of uh, concrete with rebar for any flat surfaces and probably six inches for any of the, the trimming features uh, within the school park. Uh, real quick, question for you folks. Are we a part of the Vermont League of Cities and Towns? Yes. Okay. Um, Michael Parker, he needs to say that they have a max height uh, for an item in the state park if we're part of that membership. I think he said it was seven feet. So I'll be doing a little redesign so that our quarter pipe doesn't exceed that height. But um, just for a little bit. It was insurance for a bit. But that's the only one that exceeded that, right? Right. Yeah, it was the quarter, and that's, that's only the turnaround to get speed for, for the thing that's opposite it. So there's a bunch of ways we can get speed just to stop at 7. Shane, we could also give you, I know Wayne this year was there today looking at um, doing this inspection. We could certainly give you, if you call the office or email Kelly or myself, we could give you his contact information um, at the LCT to find out if there's any other caveats since you're doing a redesign and don't want to have to, you know. What's the contact you want to have? You could contact myself or Kelly. Um, who is it? Who is it? His name is Wade, Wade. W-A-D-E, Masseur, M-A-S-U-R-E. At the LCT, and you may find it right on their website, um, Shane. But if not, certainly call the office, and myself or Kelly can give you his contact information. Thank you. It might help you then. If there's if there's one caveat, there may be two. So. Um, yeah. So certainly we can help you. Would would be surprised about one and one. Yeah. Um. So I just wanted to, uh, before we go forward, I just wanted to make sure I had this right. So. Uh, so you would do one of the two stages this year? Um, Complete? Spring of 2020. Okay. We would do the, some site prep. Some so site prep is done. Yes. For, the, for this fall. Yeah. And then spring of 2020, we would do the first four, which is hopefully at least half of one of the two pieces that we see. Okay. So what he's saying is, yes, he's at this home. They're only on-ramp. Yeah. Be And then when, when would you plan on, so based on that, when would you foresee using the in-kind portion of it? Uh, um, we would use some of it this summer, the tail end of this, this year. As, yeah, I don't think Michael would really even need to be on site for the site prep. If we had enough T's cross, you know, he could make enough specifications that almost any contractor could comply with. Hey, this is the intent, this is how, how we, this is what materials should be going into this things executed this way. So I, I think it, it could be done just with the time.
I assume that all of this is your point of the rec committee that you, you're having that ongoing conversation with the pool and what they've got going on. But yes, yeah, these would be necessary. Yeah, right. And you right. always be right. the framework for yeah. yeah. As long as that's all sort of way the right. pool season's closed, oh. and that's right. when it's, it's the day it's officially it's able to. Yeah, that was my, yeah. my main thought was right. heavy equipment with kids in the pool. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 so, so we have the date of the final day of the pool. Do you have anything that would show where this lands in the, the whole? Well, you put it on the, uh, the, the plan, the site plan, uh, which I didn't bring a copy of today, but it is on the town. So if you're on, if you're on 12, looking down the entry to the pool area, it would be on the back right corner of the property with enough offset. I think we're required 15 foot setback from the property line on, on this side. Do you have to go back to the DIB for the redesign or any of that? Um, um, did you go to the DIB? What's the DIB? The only, yeah. the only yeah. time we have to go to them, it, we've been approved for 5,000 square feet with proper setback and a couple, they had a couple stipulations which we can meet. Yeah. Um, just because we're doing a smaller portion, that doesn't require uh, visiting them. However, it is a one-year uh, permit right. to do this. So we have to revisit them the next fall when our other one would expire. And we get the form into that ahead of time so that it would be as if our form was a continuous two, possibly three-year uh, rolling permit. And they, they, they did it off the cuff. They didn't see any reason why they would rescind the permission that they would have given in the, in the previous year. Does the IV permit uh, include the tennis court and the uh, basketball court? Yeah. 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 Not that we get yeah. to this year, but yeah. we tried to say, hey, these are just places and spaces that we can It's been on. four years since people can use that, as they did before we put the back up. I think we have a tennis court. We even put in the, uh, the basketball court space in the middle. But I understand it has been four years since people could utilize that kind of thing. So being that the that the skate park will be a you know, let's say at least a two season phasing, uh, what and obviously we have more money in the rec committee fund than what is allowed for the skate park. What uh, what what is your anticipated um, maybe starts for some of the other activities there, you know, like the tennis court, basketball court uh, pieces. So have you so had much discussion on that? We have, we have off and on, and it hinges to some degree on this. So suppose Michael comes back and says, I can't do this for less than 85, you know, for half. I mean, we're, we're already kind of out of the game. We'd be bumping this to the following year. We'd have to raise funds in order to just even proceed with the first half. And if we were trying to um, make something available to the town uh, for that site, um, you know, we, we ping pong the idea of uh, a basketball court. And I think the basketball court was going to happen before tennis. Is that um, no, 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 not necessarily. What we something. need to do, we need to do the first thing is we need to figure out about the telephone lines and the electric. Yeah, you know, or like whatever, and get them renewed, or uh, renewed, 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 we still need the, to look into, we need a really hands-on about where to, to remove the telephone lines and the, because the other part of the plan the, is in the telephone lines, the um, electrical line, you know, those need to be, um, first, yeah. they need to be, um, <coughs> I think we're looking at having the engineering perform. Yeah. Yeah. I think 
director of the have the engineering perform? Give me an estimate on you know, how much would it cost to move, move any lines? Move the lines. What if they, they have to be moved in order to the state park fees? No, oh, for, the, for the basketball court and the tennis court. They have to be moved. So you located them, you had a big save yeah. for somebody. Right. You know, right. 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 In order to do those, that section of the plan with the basketball court and the tennis court, they have to be um, um, changed. Wow. Because that, that, that could be a lengthy process. You know, yeah. I mean, it could be expensive, but it also well, could be well, lengthy right. for right. permitting. Right. Greg right. didn't, didn't, didn't feel that. Very expensive. Uh, that may be one thing that start working. You know, you can, it seems like it's far out, but yeah. you know, the way the right, utilities yeah, that, work. And, that's what we need to do now. Yeah. All you need, you can call, if you call Green Mountain Power, you can speak to their, they have someone who specializes in that, um, certainly in this area. And um, I know Kathy McGrath did it in Addison County, but you can call them and, and they will um, call the MP. They'll send someone out there for you and they are more than happy to give you an estimate. Yeah. Uh, or on, uh, or on, asking for a donation. Yeah, I'm moving it. So, but my, I have a strong feeling that that's probably cost prohibitive for you, for sure. I've seen that it's expensive, but certainly give GMP a call and tell them what you're looking for, and they will send somebody out to meet with you there and and, uh, and provide you with it. Well, you never know. You could price the estimate. Yeah. Find out the estimate and yeah. you know get yourself a. Um, a web page you can ask for donations, you'd be surprised right there. Yeah. Do you guys need funding for that? We could use any and all funding yes. means yes. available mm -hmm. for any number of reasons. Yes, uh, yes. Okay. Who, who would I talk to about that? Talk uh, to you guys? Or yeah. Any yeah. director, any yeah. she's, yeah. she's Okay. Coming. Or talk to Ellie, though. I mean, if you have some funding ideas, or absolutely, please. Yeah. That would be lovely. Yeah. I just go back and get every year. Yeah. 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 So when when will you know exactly uh, the pricing for the phases. So I'll hear it and then I stay within a week. And then he'll sharpen his pencil and I'll refine my layout so that it's great, more more simplified if need be. Um, he said the, the really tall stuff, like the 10 foot quarter, he said that was that would be the hardest piece. You have to use two lifts and we went into a little detail on what would be involved uh, equipment wise and time uh, and manpower. So if that goes down to a seven footer that's not vertical, um, that that greatly simplifies his job and reduces the cost significantly. That could be that could be like five or ten in grand potentially by not having something that high in that price. Well if you have any trouble you know getting hold of weight, you know, don't hesitate to call and ask Kelly or myself. Um, you know, certainly and we can um, Focus the gathering if you need, and uh, once you get your estimate and everything done, Shane, just uh, Ellie or you can let uh, Kelly or I know, and we can put you on an upcoming agenda. Okay. Any other questions, concerns, thoughts? Thanks for sticking with us. Mm -hmm. I know it's been an up and down process for you guys, but thank you for not letting go of it. I'd say particularly this calendar year. Um, we sort of thought we had that one that we worked with, and then got pulled significant down to a different number. And the square, well, <laughs> thankfully the square footage was limited so that that. Uh, have, you, have you ever staked out these areas so that people could actually build them? Uh, we did last summer, and people got really, really nervous when, <laughs> when we were going to. Put the skate park above um, oh, the tennis courts. The tennis courts were going to be in the back right corner, and we were going to put the skate park above that for the original master plan. And everyone totally freaked out. They're like, "Oh, we don't need space. We need room." And yes, that's true. It was an improved plan, and we were just trying to stick with what had been done prior. Um, and we had so, space and roads. So that, after we did that. Um, we're like, okay, yeah, we're gonna go to the board and see if we can fit the tennis court anywhere else. 
and she she looked at where the sun came from and said, yeah, we could we could totally put the tennis court in this other location up near the front property line. So that was that was actually kind of helpful. And, and, and being that the um, yeah. Being that the phasing is probably going to go two seasons or more, is there opportunity to look at some other grants or get Most back into the great we'll grant cycle of next year? We'll be actively throwing in the question line on the economy. We can throw out one of the day out of nine, but they can't take another bite of the apple next year. Yeah. So there's some opportunity maybe. Most certainly. And, and that. Because the more, you know, the more that, you know, once we have a footprint and a cost that's inside the budget, you know, once we start building that, if we could pick up a grant, you know, yeah, that could offset costs on that, that would give us more money to use towards basketball or tennis or whatever. We actually got a grant for the tennis courts, so um, not here, but in other town. And um, so I think when you when you um, move into other, other veins, you might find that there's other money out there. But I, I certainly think, um, I think we've got a significant grant for tennis from, um, I can't think of a big like national tennis outfit, but we certainly got some money from that. We built the court. So maybe when you get your tennis courts, Ellie, from our grant money. We have, I have about um, four other um, ways of the land off after tennis courts. So we yeah. have that information. Great. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, we do know that um, on Saturday, we did the wood chips under the, we raked. And we um, filled in under the um, playground structure and, and, and did all the witches there. And um, as we were doing that, two men came over to the recreation center looking to play tennis. Okay. They knew that we had a tennis board there, and they were like in shock. It's a dirt court. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, they, they drove in to play tennis and they got the shot. And it came out great. You guys did a wonderful job getting that. And I know Wade was there today inspecting and was all yeah. happy about yeah. the um, yeah. monkey bars and the other yeah. stuff. Yeah, we did. Well, we may not have a tennis court yet, but we do have one of the only working pools, so. Yes, yes, you know, we do. We do. We that's going to. We have the factors, and I did see them do the training on Saturday. Because I don't think Randolph's opening their pool again, right? <laughs> I haven't heard that. No, they are yeah, yeah. paper, so they were hoping to get it open. Yeah, lots of lots of like that. They were hoping. They found, they found, they found they 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 Yeah, I heard they had big issues there. Yeah. So, um, so you guys will get with Therese and make at another appointment when you have okay. everything all, all set to go and then get the board to look through it. We're going to start CC. Okay. Fine. These, these two phases, they, they butt right up against each other. So, whichever one we're able to do, um, it is just going its natural spot and then the phase two above right against it. There might be one seam down the middle, but it's a very deliberately plain seam that shouldn't be too offensive to the end users. Does anybody from the board have any further comment? All right, thank you. Thank you. Apologize for the wait because I ain't a little behind. But. Oh, that's all right. That was good. It was late. I was in the ER on so I was glad you were late. So, yeah, so anyway, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Great. So, we have uh, getting into the reports, motions, and ordinances. Uh, the first item on is the conflict of interest policy, which uh, that we need in order for federal funding. Yes, yeah, specifically for federal money. So you have a conflict of interest policy. This does not yeah. do anything with the existing conflict of interest policy. This is a separate one that's required for federal money in order to adhere to the federal regulation. So that's why um, that's why that's on here. I found out doing I was doing a rant for the fire department, and um, that was one of their 
and that was something that came out. Um, yeah, you submitted it and it's been approved and you're ready to go. Right, and yeah, I spoke to the lady and then um, I had, there was some sections that she recommended, you know, CFR, the Title II part. So once I went through and did that and then I sent it to them, so I gave you the letter that they were okay with it. I realize now that your copy only says draft. So um, if you're good with it and if you're going to approve it, then it would be, approving it tonight would be helpful and if you guys could just come in on your own by Friday and sign it. Um, we can print you up, and I apologize, that was my error. I didn't realize until just now. I flipped it over, I was like, oh. Oh, so, so oh yours does. Well, yeah. my yeah. We can sign one of these. You can yeah. sign for yours. Our friend mine says draft. So um, unless you have any changes, I just wanted you to see that I had drafted it and that they, that the state, had flown and accepted it. So. But yeah, you have all this. Sweet. Good. Mine didn't, so that's great. And have any issues with anybody else on the board? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would entertain a motion that we uh, sign into effect the uh, conflict of interest policy. For federal For federal funding. funding. You should definitely say that in a motion. For federal money. Because they already have a conflict of interest policy. This is specifically so, for federal money. Okay, okay all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, sign this one. Thank Chief, you. I'd like to comment the, that front page that you gave us. This uh, just you broke down into the items and what we were looking at. Oh and yeah, you helped because that conflict of interest would have been confusing. Otherwise. Yeah, that's the first correct. thought when I saw it on the agenda was, can you have that already? Yeah, yeah exactly. But then your explanation made it all clear, and I didn't have to go oh, back and ask. Well, why. that's good. Yeah, I used to. Um, do it. Thank you for putting that together because that, yeah. that was really helpful. Well, I used to do it for another town, and that's what I would always do was do something to go with the agenda. So especially if someone at home was reading, they might. Normally, um, when we do the town report, we don't 
published in there the local agreement rate. But are you, do you all know what the local agreement rate is? So, so the local agreement rate is any when you passed at your town meeting that you were going to give um, veterans qualifying veterans forty thousand dollar reduction in the value of their property. When you vote every five years for to uh, make the range tax exempt, you are still on the hook for the school tax. So that's what makes up your local agreement rate. It's it's the range because that's a vote, and it's um, your you know your veterans exemption. So that's where that comes in. And because that's you know, I don't really know normally know what that is when it's going to be um, a town meeting. So that's something that we don't normally publish because. Uh, in the town report, so that's a little bit different. That's what changes the tax rate. So the 1.0217 was was good. It's what throws it off a little bit is the local agreement rate, and uh, that's what makes that up. And I know that the state of Vermont, um, in all their wisdom, has changed the tax bill. So when you see your tax bill this year, it's going to be new, new looking. It's not. Going, it's going to be your homestead and non-homestead yeah. instead of non-residential, and instead of the municipality being on top. Couple clarifications that the legislators decided to make, I guess, in the session. So they all spent their whole time doing that. Possibly, possibly. So, which is fine. I hope we don't have a problem with that. Um, so, the reason that um, last year, I think it was about July 8th, maybe by the time we got the letter saying what the school rate is, and of course we'll publish that, but we have no, you know, state sets the school tax rate once you pass the budget. For us, because the law is clear, you have to mail the tax bills at least 30 days prior. Um, to the due date, and they're due August 15th. So, we felt that if we could get the tax rate approved tonight, then it gives us a little wiggle room. We've already ordered our tax bills for Easter, and they should be here. Um, and we want to get them out and mailed. Plenty of time for people to have it. Be nice to get a little more than 30 days to see what their bill is. Um, but that's the premise. What's attached to this is also a copy of the 411, and it, it changes. It's a moving target because every time that someone um, files their homestead late, it changes that ratio of, um, of where you look at the top, it says homestead education or non-residential education, it changes that mix a little bit. So it's kind of a moving target, it changes throughout the year, <clears throat> but um, when you set your tax right now, it's based on this, and, and um, obviously as those changes come during the year, um, the, you know, what we owe the school tax changes. So the only question I had is on the bottom, the CLA and COD rates. Yeah, that's the last one I have. I don't have newer ones. Okay. I have. I was just wondering because I, I know you know when we re-voted on the school, you know some of the big differences between us and Royalton was the common level of appraisal. Sure. So I wondered because I think. I think the number they had is higher if they're using at the school, so I'll just point it. This is the last one out. I have for the CLA, and this is just a sheet I made up and posted in the office. And it is, um, that's the last CLA I have. I looked at my folder, so if there's a newer one out there, actually, I didn't even see it on the website. I went to the State Education to find the CLA for 2019 and the COD. Um, COD, what's COD? Coefficient of dispersion from the state. So the CLA is basically, I think they take your last three years of sales and try to figure whether or not your, how's your appraisal coming in, or are you, so they're basically saying we're a little high. I understand CLA. Yeah. No. Yeah, I think we're not sure. And the coefficient of dispersion, I actually had to read, I have to reread again. I can't give you a, I, I would need to look at the thing to remind myself what it is. I just, I can't remember, but I know it, because it all comes on that same form. It gives you your, your um, CLA. And I, it's nothing that the town uses, so it's nothing that we use in our calculations. I'm not sure if the school does, but you consider I've never been on a school board. No. So you guys just use the CLA as well. Right. And the trouble with that is the fact that the only people who can, uh, can uh, object or ask for a change is the select board. You know, it affects the school only. Right. The select board is the only help, the only uh, organization that can say, we don't agree with you. Right.
heard about that at one point, selling it out of the entire port of Chile. But, <laughs> so I do know the blisters. Sometimes that can be quite a battle between the blisters and the state. Certainly it's um, spelling out what is, um, you know, what's included in their sales study. And you know, once you get to a certain number, um, your CLA, the, the state will force you into a appraisal, which is why we started saving for our appraisal. So, did you find it? Yeah, it's basically, it's it's a way of leveling. So the ideal would be zero is your COD, and zero would be that all of your properties sell at exactly what they're appraised at. Okay. That obviously doesn't happen, so this is the coefficient that levels that so that you can calculate something across the board. So it's, it basically takes all of the sales across the board, what their difference in their appraisal is, averages it, and then that's your coefficient. So we're so it's supposed to see a that we're high. That's at least my basic definition. I like it. Really quickly. Very good. Yes. So basically, so just it goes to see a and say that we're high a little bit right now. Right. And right. which yeah, you, you aim mm -hmm. from it down, and you've got to have your property values up to meet those appraisal levels. And it's interesting too, you know, you have certain towns where it's low, and it's because you, you know you start having some properties, like if your village all of a sudden everybody wants to live in the village and people start paying three times what the house is appraised at, then all of a sudden, you know, that will throw the right. things off kilter. But, um, so that's what it is, that's the tax rate. I think that's, I'm actually happy because we saw a little growth and it means that our um, estimate for the um, town work was right on the money. So I would entertain a motion to set the tax rates for 2019-2020 um, with, uh, with the homestead tax rate of 1.0257 and the non-residential tax rate. It's the same. Are we allowed to say that? No, no. it's non-homestead now, but it's the same. Non-homestead tax rate of 1.0257. It's still the municipal tax rate. It'll change when you add the school tax to it. That's what will right. generally the homestead rate is has been higher and the non lower but right. depends on whatever the state comes up with. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Can we reject and have it fifty cents lower? Mm -hmm. This point, you just got a step. So is this the show that she was in that part of it? Um, that was Louise's note on, uh, you have one property that was um, Mr. Sargent, and, and because there was a change in, um, in back up. the way that the state, if you have two contiguous, you have contiguous parcels, if you own contiguous parcels in the state of Vermont, you're supposed to get one tax bill. Right. That's if they're needed the same. Um, in his case, um, I think he used to receive two separate tax bills, um, one for maybe the trailer park and one not. He, he um, went to the state appraiser, and one of the things that the state wanted was him to receive one tax bill. And what happened was when the state appraiser came to that conclusion, he had taken into consideration that he was in current use. So it's kind of, uh, there may be, we may have to put a change in that, and uh, if so, it was not a lot of money on the tide. It was going to be around about five, like uh, eight bucks, I think, or something. So it was just her note that basically, this is who's out there, and she doesn't know how it's going to come um, to fruition. And, and uh, so I told her, you know, we should have to stay for this. So that's the kind of Any further discussion on the tax rate? And local emergency management plan, which is to readopt. Um. Yep. So there was some minor changes to the LEMP, and um, Kelly made those changes. She also um, had uh, Fire Chief David Altergetti come down and, and make sure that that was um, that he was good with the changes. Basically, it was some real gray. Um, put me in as interim, moved to Mark Lyle at Oscar, um, changed the owners of Cocker Doodle, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, so your uh, LEMP is, um, has to be signed every year in May and sent to uh, the, sent to two rivers, sent, sent to the regional planning commission, and then that, they, that got missed. So um, that's what we're doing tonight. We need this in effect to 
beyond our share of the ERAP. This isn't signed and delivered to them this week. Instead of the 7.5, we're going to pay 17.5. And so, um, so that was it. I believe that you guys have all seen this, and some of you were probably on that committee. And, and um, so those are the only changes. The um, We have to certify that the LEMP meets the NIMS requirements. and. Um, I have taken ICS 100 and 200, so I can sign that. And then, so you need a motion if you're okay with that for myself and Chris Jarvis to sign. So one, I would be signing with the incident command training that it, that it meets the guidelines, and Chris would be signing that you've adopted it. Um, and if you certainly have any questions, I can help. <coughs> So I would entertain a motion uh, to sign and readopt as amended the local emergency management plan and for Therese to sign on behalf of as a certifying as individual, certifying individual <laughs> and myself as the um, the adopt team. All in favor? Well, my page is yeah, I don't want that. It's just something. Yeah, I had added some other stuff in here. Some of this. I had like a different file that I put it all together before I came here and now they're all out of order. But well, that was interesting. Okay. That's another one. That's one. Was that updated on the website? Excuse me? Is it updated on the website? I don't know, but I can ask for it tomorrow. But it's um, just changing the name. Yeah, I'll ask uh, her. Yeah. Um, she probably already has. Yeah. But I'll ask her if on the website. If not, already. <laughs> Discussion on the EMP plan. Let's move it along. Town road and bridge standards. So you guys sign these every year. Um, this, let's see, you don't really. The reason that you sign this is because you don't have your own. So it's just easier to default to the um, to the town. Uh, to the state, excuse me.
some certainly that that here to stay, but uh, or, or paving. So they kind of give you a breakdown of um, standards for gravel and paved roads with ditches, and it just kind of tells you how they should be crowned, um, what how they should be ditched. They talk about berms, drainage runoff, and that sort of thing. So. Um, they I think back. it's in a perfect world, but yes, you would hear to all those. I don't think these guys ever go back and look and see what their what their requirements do. I drove to Williamstown today, and I can show you some stone like ditches. Yeah. And it's gone by for a year. Yeah. You can see one or two stones, it's a little silk. Oh, sure. No, 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 no. If you're on a gravel road, a stone line ditch does not work. No. I'm it's just common sense. I got home with PhDs, XYZ, by my name. Right. And the gravel road doesn't work. Yeah. So, yeah. I know. I mean, for a while, it's all about we were installing, you know, grassy swales because we, you know, they wanted more, you know, permeable surfaces. So, I don't know. It's a whole thing. And that whole municipal permit to align that is going to be some of the nightmare. I mean, with all the yeah. FEMA work, we are grabbing. Second page, once they make the motion. I don't think that's what I think. <laughs> So that's our angry people yeah. who yeah. write in a book. That works great. So I would entertain a motion to sign and adopt the town road and bridge standards. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So do we sign on with the draft? Yep, that's the copy I have. Yeah. So yes, it says final draft, so I guess we'll sign it. That's the one I was given. Oh yeah, I didn't mean it is comical because the state doesn't even adhere to the moment. It's no different than I have you know, as a contractor, I have to adhere to MUTCD guide, guidelines on the road. I'll watch them out the road doing things they should be doing. Yeah. That's the way it goes. You're right. As a teaching point, but not to. Oh, yeah, I think that's what we have to talk and show them the mm -hmm. place. That's always done. We found a group. Probably uh, said no more about hiring people that should have to sign. One of the excavation contractors out there, and it's the other one. Ridiculous. So, it's why we're all going to process here. What's our exposure for a gray road with no warning signs at all? Very high. We're not doing, we're not putting any signs out at all. Exactly. So I think we should look at that. Yeah. You know, I've heard, I know other towns have said that the potential exposure there is. Yeah, it is. We'll take care of that tomorrow. Thank you. And we have the Equipment and Roads Grant, rather than 10. So I have a meeting with Rita on Friday to go over some of this because we have participated in this program before. That's when they did the, um, you know, when all the roads meet, no, up by the old, is it the old church? Yeah, that hill we did last year. Yeah, yeah. for that meet there. Yeah, so um, I had talked a little bit about it because I also read the municipal grants permit, um, and that's a lot to adhere to. There's a lot of stuff that needs to happen. So I was thinking that I want to clarify that with Rita because I don't want to put the cart before the horse. I'd rather use the money that were available to set up your best practices and standards and do the survey and do the basic work you need to do to adhere to the permit before I have another project because I feel like that's in kind of a reverse order. So I'm going to talk to her to make sure that we're applying for all the pools of money that were available, A, to do all the steps you need to do to create these best practices, to do these surveys and do that to adhere to the municipal permit and then do the project. So if I have to choose my pot of money, I want it. I need to do that basic first and then but she said that you could come and meet with me and let me know all the available grants that are out there. So I don't know, you know, Greg would get those emails, not me. So
So I just want to make sure that we haven't missed any funding opportunities. And you know, we just paid that permit. You know, cost you money, and you have to adhere to it. So it's just there was a bunch of uh, projected room that needed to be done. Uh -huh. that was based on hydraulics. Right. Standing area, if I remember correctly. Exactly. So that's what I'm going to talk to her about. So they, these are just um, letters of intent, grant letter of intent, saying. I know that um, Alan is interested in a leaf blower to clean the leaves and sediment from the ditches and reduce culvert plugging. So that's where this um, grant and aid program for equipment purchase um, comes into play. So that's one letter of intent. And then the, obviously the other letter of intent is that we would um, like to take advantage of constructing one or more best road best management practices, um, you know, to connect roads and construct the roads um, on hydrologically connected road segments, etc. So basically, we always want to take advantage of as much grant money as we can. And this is just, this isn't um, tying us to anything. It's just saying that we would like to. It kind of holds us a place in line for our money. So if you look at these, you saw them in your packet. They're two separate. <coughs> Two separate things, and it looks like we live to evolve. So I guess that you all sign. Both of them. Do you have any questions on it that wasn't answered in your packet? Yeah. <clears throat> There's some of the, uh, well, the one about the equipment. Do you need to check off the piece of equipment they want? Um, yeah, I was. I just wanted to verify with Alan. Uh, as I know what Greg told me that Alan wanted, so I just wanted to have Alan tell me what Alan wanted. So I was just going to verify that with him. Um, but uh, Greg thinks it's the leaf blower, so. I mean, I would, I mean, I would take advantage of the grant money that's there right now, even though, you know, this again is one of those, and I can't remember what act it was that they passed two and a half years ago, but, you know, these hydraulically connected roads, you know, we have to have a plan and to be managing that plan, and I believe it's by 2020. Exactly. And that's it's one of those things, again, that has been passed down to Montpelier with LA, a revenue source to the town. And, you know, we have some opportunity to purchase some of these pieces of equipment that will help us, you know, uh, maintain, you know, these areas. But, you know, the little bit of money that they're going to give us for this, you know, they give us $21,900 worth of grant money that's going to cost us half a million dollars over X amount of years. It's just, a, you know, yeah. it's a slap in the face, really. But, you know, this is what continues to happen at Montpelier. Make policies, make policies that affect small towns, and no way of, um, you know, covering the, the revenue or the cost on these. And this is just another example of this, you know. And Unfunded mandates. And, and, hey, in a perfect world, like if we all would like to see this, but you know, again, these are just things that you know, a little town like Bethel are going to have a tough time of, of compliance with. And so that's my thing with her. Sorry. What is a hydraulically connected road? I don't even know what that is. Basically, they're trying to make sure that any, any runoff, like anything out of the ditches, and anything that's going into the river, they want to make sure that it has been filtered or, you know, so they want it to be stone lined so that it's not, you know, nothing like that is going into the river. And it seems like, obviously, a lot of this, I think, was generated probably by farms and, you know, back in the day, right? I mean, the some of the stuff that's getting in the river, but basic phosphorus. And uh, we got, you know, and, and you know, the town of Bethel, when you look at our, we'll say neighboring towns, but neighboring towns might be, you know, six or seven towns around us. You know, we're kind of in the middle of the pack for the amount of miles that we have. And, yeah. you know, we currently ha have, uh, they put us in the classification of 45 to 50 connected road miles. So, I mean, 45 to 50 road miles is a lot. And, you know, for a little town of Bethel now, you know, it, it goes as 
you know, at least amount has like five to ten. You know, like uh, you know, and some of these are really tall, but you know, yeah. Zero to three. West Fairley with fifteen to twenty, yeah. or or Pittsfield with ten to fifteen, but those are also very small communities. Yeah. But then they get as big as you know, Hartford's got sixty to sixty five road miles. Yeah. But that's only really ten or fifteen road miles more than us, and their budgets are drastically larger than ours. So they, they're able to absorb those a little better. Yeah. And my but, question is too, is if is if this uh, is what we're going to get, if our grant offer it says here we can get twenty one nine and it says eligible for equipment purchase, yes. So it sounds like you get twenty one nine and you can do some for this and some for that, but if we need to have all and these best practices and all this stuff done and max we can get us twenty one nine and they're talking about uh, you know if we have to hire engineers or whatever, that that concerns me. So that's why I have And there's a match on it too. There is a match, yeah. you know, which we can do as in kind, um, which hopefully we can oh. take away of and use cash. That's what it says right here. Twenty yeah. percent local match cash or in kind. And I believe we've had before so many bad. I I correct me if I'm I, I believe that Greg was working on because we've had the gravel roads uh plan going on. Yeah. That had some grant money attached to it, but yeah, you know, I believe we were putting those two together, the grant, you know, the regular gravel roads assessment with the hydraulic roads. Because We'll have to look through it. I'll help you with it. But I know, yeah. we have a cutoff date before we're supposed to be compliant. Well, probably means, I want to agree to know. Which means we have to have a plan in place. Yeah. Um, well, probably two rivers. No, so I'll talk to Rita on and ask her what the, the skinny is because. Um, you know, that was like July of 2020 or something like that. Oh, good. That you have to have it. Now, I mean, think of how many of these. How many of these local towns are going to have a plan in place and be able to? Get and they could end up extending it, but. Um, yeah. Like I said, I'm just going to talk to her to see what else what else is out there for. Um, so the last I knew, the grant money that's out there, which has been out there for the past, let's say, two years now, is in some cases some small pieces of equipment, like really small. Yeah, much of this. And in some cases, um, some grants out there to do the engineering study for your plan. Well, that's so, the thing. That would but be then. The town's up to take care of the plan. So. Exactly. Well, that's the thing is, if it's if they're only going to give us this amount of money, right. if they're only going to give us the twenty one nine, and right. we need to do an engineering study. Well, let's use twenty one nine for an engineering study and forget about the leaf blowers. I, I think you can look at. I think they have a separate. Talk to Two Rivers. I think they have a separate uh, grant for. That's why I'm going to meet with our planning right, to, grant. to solve that mystery. I don't know. So she's kind of like coming to see me. Got at the TROC breakfast. I yeah. gave the grant. Every grant, every grant, when it's due, the conditions for it. Uh -huh. so probably give you that again. Because okay. I think what you have right here, or I have a copy of it. You do. I can make a copy because I don't know where it was. So, so these are two different letters of intent. Um, one is so I just, I guess, as you want to separately, Chris, if you're going to approve the letters. Yeah, so you must must enroll by the 2020 mm -hmm. and have your best management practices for hydraulically connected municipal roads in order to be eligible. Exactly. So what I'll do is so even if we go forward with this, it doesn't necessarily mean that we will qualify because the only way we're going to get this money is we'll have to have a plan in place prior to them accepting the grant. Like it, they call it a grant, but everybody's going to get this. So yeah. mm -hmm. They've already told you how much money they're going to give you, but you have to have a plan in place to be able to get the money So what I'll do is, is I'll, I'll just give you an update at the next meeting after my conversation with Rita so I can tell you what she says. Do you want to wait on this? or? No, this I need done tonight okay. because they're two separate things. Um, and this is due by July 3rd and we're not going to meet again. But I'm going to see her Friday. So, um, I think we've signed this before. I think so. I thought we've signed this before. But I know Greg has brought this before us before. I don't know. So I would um, 
sorry. So I don't know if that's the case. I'm pretty sure we have. Well, but let's I'll, do it again. I'll entertain a motion to. I don't know where it is. I'll entertain a motion to sign the equipment and roads grant letter for um, two rivers. So Second. All so favor. Your father's I'm, I'm confident we've signed this. Yeah. Well, I don't know where it is. And it showed up in the, it was in the um, select work packet and the select work file to be done. And okay. It's been done, I don't know where it is. And they sent it to me, so if you signed it, I'm not sure. Well, they have. last year. Okay, so it was this year. We've right? seen it before, I've seen that in between. I know that Greg talked to you about it but recently because I was at a meeting, but I don't know. Oh, this was a while ago. Okay. Yeah, the, the, so the I was here. Yeah, the I made this time last year. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of road risks that were possible down the road. We talked about it every year. Somewhere. We did have uh, three bidders for the project. This was the first one of four gravel roads projects that we had bid out. Um, the uh, bid numbers were, um, I'll, I'll start from highest to lowest. The uh, Blue Mountain Trucking and Excavation was $278,973. Excavation was two hundred seventy-two thousand four hundred forty-five dollars, and W. B. Rogers was two hundred nineteen thousand thirty-one dollars. So the the apparent low bidder was. Uh, W.B. Rogers on this first um, segment. The only thing I just wanted to put out there, not to throw a wrench into the plans. Um, so when we went to bid these, we went through kind of the real formal process of how the state lays them out. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do it that way for the federal money. So um, the first bid went out with the, the full requirements of you know, the contractors need a bid bond, they need to do performance and payment um, insurance. Um, and what we had kind of found out that there were there were other contractors that didn't bid on it because you know they I wouldn't say they didn't meet those qualifications, but didn't want to um, assume the cost to you know take out a bid bond and, and the insurance on it. Um, and the projects that we have going forward, all of them we have, since then, we have taken the bid bond and the insurance out of it um, to get more competition and more local involvement. Um, Not the insurance requirements. 
Yeah. No, but I meant the uh, bit. Just in those space just yeah. now, whereas he's like. The, the performance payment. The, right, yeah, the performance of the bond is out. So. The insurance requirement is still in. It's just Mo and Lily are looking at each other. So there's. Six heads. So, so, there's so, <laughs> so there's been some disturbances out there in the contractor community that had that had not been, you know, you know, bids three, four, uh, two, three. Two, three, and four that we have out there or are about to go out there are different than bid one. So there's that. We would bid on that, you know, information is what it is, you know, we would be lower than that, you know, how that goes. So all I wanted to throw here, not that I don't want to award the job tonight, but I just want the board to understand that there were a lot of comments that were made by contractors that thought that they could have bid on this that didn't because they didn't want to meet those requirements that now we're not requiring them to do on bids two, three, and four. So, Which is uh, hard because how, now you publish the yeah. numbers and all that. And then, yeah. you know, that was uh, Greg's, you know, we, I, it was his decision to uh, put it in and his decision to take it out. So. so the only reason why I don't bring that up is, you know, had we have stuck this thing out the whole entire time of the same exact requirements, you know, it is what it is, but meaning that we've already amended our other bids to not include those. You know, there is the opportunity that we could rebid it and get lower numbers, but we also have to understand that, you know, um, that a large portion of this money is paid for by FEMA, so our, you know, we're talking about, you know, our piece might be, 7 .5. It, you know, Seven point five. So, you know, it, even if the bid came in ten thousand dollars less than that, it's not a big amount. Of money. But just want everybody to understand yeah, so that. Really, yeah. So it'll that. be good going forward. So maybe you'll see, you know, possibly, you know, we'll see if those bidders actually bid on the next few projects. And uh, so we we had a pretty good turnout today. I think we had. And we did for yeah, we did for the others too. Same seven bidders. Um, that were there today, so I'd say there were seven, yeah. Yeah, seven. At least, yeah. So, um, seven bidders of which, you know. Because it was all mandatory pre-bid, yeah. so they were there today, whether they'll have bidding on it, you know. Yeah. You, you did all three of the next projects today. No, we no. just did one. We just, so we just did, did one. Because yeah. there's, this one is out and awarded, the one of the others, I can tell you, because I put that list in your packet. The, yeah. I have the yeah. FEMA, yeah. yeah, so let's see. So the Earliesville camp, that was this one, the Southwest Quadrant Priority. They had the pre-bid meeting for already. Um, today we did the pre-bid meeting for the East Quadrant and then uh, the 8th we'll do the pre-bid for the Northwest Quadrant and I'm actually trying to piggyback that to do that day to the Northwest Quadrant, the paving bid, and maybe even the the pre-bid for the paving and maybe the pre-bid for the bridge. And now I'm like trying to get these things out, but right now I'm going to be relying on some information, hydrological studies and stuff from the state that I can use. So that's my goal is to get that out, and then if we also need to put get it, uh, put engineering out of it because the bridge needs to be engineered. But we also have two issues on um, the line that Greg didn't address, so that will be addressed, and that if that needs engineering. I'll combine that into one engineering bid, so they're going to they the winning bid design the bridge as well as the other things. So, but. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that the gravel roads and the paving, the gravel roads were easy to put together because you know, there were a lot of issues. Um, but the Camp Brook Road has been a little more convoluted because it comes from different funding sources. So Federal Highway with state funds are going to fund 100% of the work on that road. So yeah. getting up to speed on uh, uh, putting the bid together with, you know, with their bid tabulations has been slower. Um, and that's an interesting, I found out today, too, that the end date when the work has to be completed on, I was thinking, you know, when, thinking about when things closed, you know, that sort of thing. And Chris Bump Day is like, you know, it has to be within that 160 days. So I'm looking at September 30th. Yeah. So anyway, so. So, that, but then there's, then there's some of these, like, you know, we have the Pinella Bridge, which, on, on some parts of it is easy, like, you know, the state's gonna pretty much give us the temporary bridge, but there's a whole lot of underlying work that has to be done before you can even do anything out there or get it, you know, 
um, the hydro study is going to be yeah, done. Yeah, that has to be done. So that means now we have to, and because it's coming with FEMA money, then you have to bid out the services for that to have someone design it, <coughs> and then turn around and allow us to bid it. And, you know, so it's going to be a thing. Hopefully, it's that I spoke to Mrs. Pinello today. Um, Ms. Pinello, well, it's not a very name, but anyways, she, um, I told her that we would have a temporary bridge in by August 16th. <laughs> that was, yeah. Sorry. But, anyway. We just didn't say how temporary it was going to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Might be or a little bridge here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's the challenge with some of this with the, the different funding sources and, and what's required of these funding sources. Uh, if they're over a certain cap, they have to bid it. If it's under a certain cap, they don't have to, you know, like, so like the. Uh, engineering services just goes over the cap, so you have to bid it out, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's that whole other process there. So yeah, that's gonna be great. So, so anyway, is this the Lilyville Campbell here? Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't named the Cool Cup Quadrant like the other. No, ones. it wasn't. This was so, the first one out. These, <laughs> so the apparel bidders are going to be Rogers, and then um, so obviously a contract has to be issued, and someone has to sign that on behalf of the town. So that would either in your motion is either going to be Chris or myself. Sign the contract. So, um, and I don't care either way. Whatever you want. Um, we, we think we will, but we did talk about at the pre bid meeting and um, make sure it goes in the contract was the fact that we said we wanted to, you know, load slips. And I'd also like to see whoever was doing the project, the road foreman, or, or not road foreman, the project foreman to also initial those load slips. So that was part of it. So we'll put that in the contract as well. Just make sure that happens. And the other thing we're some of you may be aware of not, but um, you know the, the game plan was to kind of have Alan oversee these segments as they're going. But now, now that we're probably going to see some overlap on these segments, you know, the, the thought right now is to try and find somebody that has, you know, some qualifications. You know, maybe a retiree that has qualifications of roads, or uh, that maybe we can hire through the town. So they become a town employee for a short period of time to do the, um, you know, the inspecting or you know, uh, doing that. Because I think we're going to get into a position where, um, you know, we're going to put too much on Alan if he's Alan can't do all if he's out there doing that. And that's a full time job or not a full time job, but it's it's, it's two different yeah, types of work. So, yeah. um, I mean, some of the options are obviously we could bid out um, engineering, you know, services. To have someone out there, which is you know, hundred plus dollars an hour, which is you know, ridiculous. Or what we're looking at right now is um, a couple of different individuals yeah. that maybe can come in for a couple names and Chris maybe can come in for ten or fifteen hours a week and you know, check in once or twice a day. Take deal. Um, so if anybody does have, um, it's unfortunate Gary Slack that was the head of the road crew for like. 40 years or something like that, he works for WD Rogers. So. Otherwise, he would have been perfect. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. They have, so, what happens is um, I did speak with FEMA and they said that as long as it is under $10,000, um, you can sole source it. So, we can put them through payroll. And, and then, because if you if you put, if you you don't go through put them on payroll, then basically you're going to need to go through the whole procurement process. And, yeah. And, you know, yeah, I don't think it's an engineer. I need someone who's on there to gather the load slips, knows what they're talking about, and could should be great if they need it. Um, that's what we need. And someone to make sure that if there's questions, that it's handled. Because now, you know, he has a lot to do, and I have a lot to do, and, and um, we need Alan's somebody help. Yeah. Huh? Alan's yeah. Alan has a lot to do. Yeah, Alan has a lot to do, so why? I just think it makes sense, you know, we talked about that as far as putting that um, out there. So if anybody has stuff. any recommendations, feel free to reach out to Therese and uh, we have, um, I have one gentleman that used to work for me that has retired. He lives in Bradford. Um, and then Therese had. Mo had a couple names that he'd given me. Um, Bill Brainer. And, um, and then I, I thought about um, maybe Bruce Newell, but I know he works for Harvey three days a week. I've approached him and he's hearing that now. Um, so I was trying to think of people as well. And, um, but um, we just need, we need someone with a specific skill set to do this. And like I said, we're, we're looking at like an hour or an hour or so a day. What did you have to say? Did you not? No, I was just saying I don't know about those records. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and you know we're behind on all of our normal work anyway. So yeah, I just traveled the road. That went great this year. Well, oh, I haven't got there yet. I went on a lot the other day. Oh yeah. I'm here for Patrice, and I'll tell you this: work's not getting done. Yeah, and it's been challenging. You know, it's been challenging too because we've had you know all the rain, and you can't graze in the rain. You know, so. mm -hmm. But yeah, Mo and Judy were kind enough to go get all the stakes. <clears throat> because for FEMA, one of the requirements is that you have the um, GPS. So Mo and Judy were kind enough to go drive around and hit all the stakes and give us the GPS coordinates because we'll need them for the FEMA for that. So. All right. And next up to bid, we got um, we have the stagecoach appointment. Um, and we have currently uh, Tom Burgos is in that capacity. And um, what does that mean? He wants to be reappointed. The stagecoach. Oh, he's a rep he's the Bethel representative to the stagecoach. Um, and he, he, they get for their bylaws, they do a four-year term. And um, so he reached out to us saying, hey, I need to be pre-appointed. And Kelly was like, okay. And I think he sent us a copy of the bylaws saying yep. that. And he wants to continue. So you always want to reappoint those people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. and, he's, and he's been good. And his, you know, he comes to us once a year usually. He gives us an update what's going on. Stagecoach um, kind of works as a liaison between, you know, stagecoach and what they're looking to get. For funding versus what where we're at and works with the human services board um, for those appropriations. So, so I would entertain a motion to uh, appoint Tom Burgos for another four-year term. To the stagecoach. To stagecoach. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The letter for Chris is John. Sullivan and Powers, scope of service is signed and approved. Yep, so it's standard, everybody, you know, the transportation to sign one. Um, basically, it gives you the whole, you know, says all the standards and what they're willing to do and, and what their audit objectives are. Um, tells you all the information that becomes in your financial statements. Um, they talk about what their, um, you know, what their limitations are of the audit. Um, so it just goes through all sorts of compliance on the other services that they provide, and what our management responsibilities are, what I need to get done to give to them, so that when they come to audit and appear, um, talk a little bit about yourself, uh, about himself, about them, and the way they work. Um, he talks about your fee arrangements. Talks about um, you know that they issue the draft audit report, etc. So did we um, did we not already approve the contract? Did we have, didn't we make an approval on a three year contract for them? Yeah, we did. But I think they make you sign a scope of services every year. And I'm going to go back and find the other one to just double check this 21 five because I thought it was high, but. Um, if it is, I'll cross it out and put in the right the other number, but I just didn't have a chance to go to it today and find it. But so you use the same thing. If there's two to sign because you sign our copy, we do one and then you sign their copy and send it on. Okay. And um, yeah. I actually just spoke to Rick Brig on the and um, scheduled for when he's coming in July and then when the audit will be done in um, October. And the other audits finalized, and the, the audits on the website. Okay. Entertain a motion to accept the Sullivan and Powers scope of services. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, I know. I think they've told me. Honestly, I haven't. They've changed that for me. 
think they changed the name. In the we get a lot of the numbers. And send it to town to town. They probably highlight the date it changed the town and the number. Right. Every, that's it. And there's two of them, like I said. So one for us, one for them. This transfer station just did there. And uh, we just sent that over. So. And you need a place where they show up, obviously. While you're signing that, we can start a discussion. We get the town manager search. Um, so what I tried to do, and I was able to get it done today. Um, so our, you know, kind of looking back from the the last town meeting uh, manager search that we did. Um, and looking through the leagues last, well, we'll go back. Two town managers ago, we went through the league and got an interim town manager and, and then went through the league again and, and acquired Keith uh, um, through interviewing. And last time, we, um, we were dependent on the league again to um, kind of set up our interview questions, uh, get the um, do the uh, uh, you know the job description, put all that stuff together, advertise it, get it out there for us, and then they laid out. Paul's probably got you know. Then they laid out kind of the, the schedule of events and how it would go over, over the course of six months, um, and then they charge us a very hefty fee to do that. So um, you know, I believe it. Last time it was like sixty five hundred dollars just for the advertising, and then it was like so much an hour. For any of the work behind the scenes, which was like $80 an hour or something. It was very pricey. Um, so we had kind of, we were kicking it around there at the last meeting um, that, you know, we kind of felt that this time around we would probably not lean on the, the league as, as hard that we could come up, you know, we have a lot of the structure from last time. So just kind of going through and, and uh, <clears throat> you know, we have the, you know, we have the, uh, the job description from last time. Um, and then kind of looking through the job description, you know, there are some, there are some responsibilities, either general or financial, that I guess we could move this here or take that out. But at the end of the day, we don't know exactly what we're gonna get and who, what their qualifications are. So, and depending on who we have come on as a town manager could, could you know, change how things look, you know, we, we could have someone that's more, like Greg, that was more public works oriented than financial, you know, and that's why we have to reach, you know, those types of playing around. So, um, I looked through the job description and the, the one that the league had done for us last time, which I gave you guys a, a handout, it's a, it's double-sided. Um, I, I would just say that we would, uh, go with that same job description as before. Um, and then the, the town manager kind of cover letter that goes with it uh, is what I revised today, um, which is just kind of the, um, gets into a little bit of the background of the, the town, um, and kind of the makeup and who they report to and you know kind of a a small snapshot of you know their their budgeting um, budgeting how many employees they have um, one thing i did put in here last time we had a salary starting at you know the league recommended that we had a salary in there because i know there was a question last time that one of the board members had on do we need to put a salary or you know number in there and they said they do or else you're just not going to get you know many bites at the apple so last time we had gone in at 60 to 70 thousand was the base salary um, of course when we came out of that we, all of us that were with with it we found out quickly that you know 60 was out of the question you know it was 70 plus so, um, so instead of saying 60 to 70 this time, I just set a, set a salary starting at 70, so it gives us, you know, Greg came on for a little bit more than that. Um, it seems like that's 
at least the range we need to be looking at because there are four other municipalities that are looking, actively looking for a town manager, so that uh, doesn't help us as much uh, there. Um, and then, you know, the last time we had discussed a little bit that it seemed like the board wanted to look this time rather than more nationally with it, like we did last time, going more regionally with it. So, Teresa and I had looked at like uh, advertising in the, well, we had looked at advertising, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, yeah, you New York, and Massachusetts, but as we found out so far, New York isn't I very easy to yeah. advertise in, yeah. unless you want us 10 big colors, so yeah. um, we may not advertise in New York. Well, I looked at all of these, but, and theirs was just the mayor's yeah. and this way. Yeah, every other was easy, but theirs was tough. I mean, just make a phone call to figure out if you're good, but everybody else was easy, so. So, so it, it, you know, last time we were, last time we looked nationwide, so our, um, so our requirements were, I would say we set the bar for our requirements a lot higher, knowing that we were going to pull from a larger pool of individuals. So we had put some language in there last time, like a minimum was you had to have a bachelor's degree, yeah, even though a master's degree would be, you know, recommended. You know, so we really set the bar pretty high, knowing we were pulling from a big group. And this time I just kind of, at least what I put in here now is just a draft, but I was thinking more that we're going regionally, um, that we should probably lower the bar on the education a little bit. Um, so I, I put, instead of saying, you know, a bachelor's degree is required, I just said a bachelor's degree is not required, however, it would be recommended for, you know, public administration, business administration, or for the field. Now, that'll allow us to draw in more applicants, and, you know, if you look out there, I'm sure there are a lot of town managers that have no bachelor's degree, you know, that might be in the field for 20 or 30 years. Yeah, got um, however, at the same time, if someone applies for it, and, you know, we don't think they need what we're looking for, we don't have to interview them anyway. So, um, I just think it would draw in a few more people, especially uh, maybe some people that have a lot of relevant experience, but not necessarily the, the education end of things. Um, I have town managers that have degrees in. Not, not public administration, you know. Or it could be something different. Yeah, yeah. I have an English degree. You know, so I certainly know it's all over the map, but. Because you do get, you know, I think more than, you know, especially the ones that are on the, you know, looking at internet type end of things. If, you know, they quickly go through it and it doesn't meet this, this, or that, they, you know, they don't apply to it, right? So maybe it just kind of opens up to uh, what we might get. Um, and then, you know, I changed around things here. Instead of everything going you know, to the league this time, that it would come to the town office. Uh, and the mechanism for delivery would be, um, uh, well, what we've asked for is everybody to send in a cover letter, resume, and three references, which was what was asked for last time. Um, sealed envelopes um, can go directly to the town office, where they'll be sealed and they'll be put in a, an area that nobody will yep. touch and we'll open them as a board. Yep. Um, and then the only thing right now I haven't determined yet is um, for the electronic ones, we probably ought to open a, an email account, you know, that we can do a Gmail account or something. And I was gonna play around with that tonight and find something that, you know, Bethel or whatever, at Gmail or something. And then, um, then we can put that in where we can. I mean, you might be able to find like that whole manager search or, yeah. or something. Figure out something. Yeah, no, I definitely think that it needs to stay out of or the no. office. Yeah. I told it. I just don't think that. Yeah. So then what we can, and then um, last time I looked through it and they had um, they had a month deadline for advertising. So they advertised it and gave everybody a month um, to uh, apply. So. Do we need to go that long? Well, I mean, I guess you can close it at any time. I guess what I yeah, I guess what I, I did for now is I just said you know the deadline to apply would be July thirty first, which is you know about a month. We were thinking that we probably, if there's not too many tweaks to it tonight, you know, we can probably get it out starting somewhere in the advertising later this week. Probably the majority of it would be the following week. Um, yeah. And, um, and then Teresa and I were looking at some of the advertisement and 
things. Um, we would probably look to advertise in like three local publications. Um, you know, that would be like a newspaper type um, ideal that would, you know, canvas the local region. When I say local region, more Vermont, maybe a little bit New Hampshire, a little bit of New York or something. Um, but then there's. Um, so you said Rutland Herald. We were talking what about. Was we were talking about the Valley News, Valley Rutland News, Herald, Valley News, thank you. for now. Who um, first? Seven, seven days. We talked statewide. Well, the only thing with seven days is it's very expensive. Um, so their fee, yeah, their fee is like three times the amount of everybody else's. Although I wonder. And their publication is only for one week. <laughs> everybody but, else's is, you know. You know what, Chris? I wonder if you can get. We use advertising seven days sometimes, and I wonder if you can do it just on their website and not in their publication, if maybe it would be cheaper. No, I right. don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. Just, the argument for seven days would be that there's such a wide reach. Right. Because Rutland, you're really only going to hit Rutland. You know, Montpelier, you're only going to hit Rutland. You're going to hit those small areas, so is the, is the, you know, the back of your buck worth it with right. the statewide reach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also we talked about indeed.com, but you know, if you have your internet, can you check seven days website and see some some public some places will let you do one and not the other and it's cheaper, but I don't remember their requirement. We used to always advertise in the free press or in seven days because free press was cheaper and then it's for that flip flop, but they have an amazing online web presence for jobs. Mm -hmm. so. I think that's quite a diverse um, audience too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just I know a number of people that that's their immediate go-to and they're yeah. looking for jobs before anything else. So that's always yeah. So I guess our I guess our plan of attack was to do three local what we're going to call local sources, which you know is probably more Vermont, maybe a little bit in after a little bit in New York, um, and then and then the online ones, which there were um, a few, um, some of them mobile. I'll say half of them are kind of a, a municipal association type uh, one, you know, that Vermont, New Hampshire, all the states have their own. And most of them are free or no charge for those. There was one New Hampshire charge that was 150 bucks yeah. for theirs. And the good thing about those, if you get them out this week, you may be able to get them their July publication. So you'll get on their website and be in the VLCT, like we get the book. So um, you'd, be, you'd be on both. So if you do approve it, you might be able to hit the deadline for July. If and, not, you at least hit their website. But and this and, and what we kind of looked at was the uh, this is what the league had sent us last time on their schedule of advertisements. Um, so this was actually all the carriers that they advertised through last time. Um, I've taken out you know some of them that I just didn't think that we you know got anything with last time, um, but um, we're, you know, if we add seven days back in, I'm, I'm thinking that I don't think our advertising will be like, like $2,600 or $2,700 to advertise in all those publications. So you have the front line here on the values, and what was your third local? Well, I think if we went with the seven days, then that would cover okay. the northern territory. Uh, so it looks like, at least just from that posting a job on their website is buying a print ad and also getting it posted on their website. It's, you can't just do the website. Oh, that's what it looks like. But we can get a hold of their sales team and see what. And it's, yeah, so we can see how much that is. Okay. Um, so we were going to look at doing that. I can ask. So um, once you make a determination of where you want them to go, then I can have uh, certainly Kelly can take care of that for you. And if seven days is very pricey, you're just going to want to go for the shorter term. Right. Okay. And I wonder if you could even do, you know, I don't think it really matters if it's two weeks back to back or a week between you know, the same. Yeah, I don't know. I can ask them, but. If they're, I don't know their prices. But Chris, you have the price list. How much is seven days? Seven days is a little over $600. Um, a week? 
for one week. One week in the newspaper plus online. What, uh, what size is that? And I, I will just let you know that last time we did not go through seven days. We didn't do the last time. So you could do a smaller ad, maybe? Right. Um, you know, where the Rutland Herald, the Valley News are like $150. And that goes for three days during the week, you know. So you want all these ads running for a month? I mean, I, I think you, I mean, you probably get most of your, I would say your local people, you probably, you know, the first week or two that you run it, you probably get a majority of them, right? So, so we could do two weeks at the Rutland Herald, two weeks at the Valley News, and two weeks at seven days, and we'll just go for some more ads, so it doesn't cost you 600 bucks. Right, and then, and then any of the internet ones we could, which most of the internet ones for the associations tend to do like a 30-day thing. So. And those were all the association associations, plus Indeed, did you have another online presence that besides those, Chris, that I'm... Um, well, I'll, I'll just list the ones. I'll list the ones that they did last time that we aren't talking about right now. Which mm -hmm. let's see. So last time they had, um, of course, this was a national one. There were two. There were two advertisements we did with two national accounts last time, which was LinkedIn and and ICMA, <coughs> which we're not doing this time because we're not going nationally. Right. ICMA has. I mean, they're still here. Regionally, but I think that I, so ICMA is certainly regional it's across the whole state, country. But so last time we probably hit the same thing with your with your yeah. um, leagues. Because last time we went with ICMA, but we did not go with LinkedIn. Uh, we went with Rutland Herald last time. Uh, we went through Randolph Herald last time. We did not go through seven days. We went through the Valley News. We went through JobsInVermont.com. And then we went through the, this, the different municipal associations that these states got one. So they did Massachusetts, Maine, New Hampshire. Um, the league themselves has a newsletter and website. Um, I think that we could, will the league put ours on there for free, being that we're a member? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll get that one anyways. Um, and then they had some other ones that they went through, like, the U, like UVM, Norwich University. Vermont Law School, Rockefeller College, SUNY School, you know, so there were a couple of college, you know, schools that they went through last time, which I don't remember anybody saying that they got it from there, so. Um, but those are more. Yeah. Do you want the, one from the, did you want the Herald local paper or not? Yeah, It's getting a smaller and smaller readership. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I just wonder with the, you know, I mean, I would think that a majority of the individuals that read the Herald will know that the town of Buffalo is looking for a town manager. Yeah. I mean, that would be one. Yeah, because these are the articles. So you can also put, you put it on the town's website, Facebook page. So that was kind of the, um, you know, and that would put our potential costs in the, 3,000 or under, uh, where last time, I don't have the exact figure, but between the advertising and whatnot, we were in the 10 to $12,000 with the, the lead doing everything. Now, a lot of, the good thing is, a lot of the templates we have from last time, so when it comes to, um, to the interviewing process, we have a lot of the questions and everything already um, that I'm sure um, Paul's got and you know, you know we can make some modifications to those and as we you know a month from now we can um, start doing that and things but it also tells us you know what we can ask and what we can't ask mm -hmm. you yeah. know all those kinds of details yeah. are all in this packet the um you also had spoken about or it came up about the committee and yeah. I, had, I had a question why don't you make a comment and I, so i was a little confused um, in case someone asks me, I want to be able to say this. I was under the impression that you had a committee that was five other people. So there was 
ten of you all together, and I ask the question. So, did you get people that interviewed by ten people? And someone no. said, well, not everybody came right. at once. And I'm thinking, well, that's not. That's you. How could they have any say? They would have to see every candidate, or how would they be any good to you? So I was well, curious about maybe what I misunderstood. So what we did last time is we had the full committee. So, and I don't think we we had five board members, and I think we had four from the community that ended up. Uh, so it's so not a people. Lisa. 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 Her. Yeah, so we had five. Her. Yeah, so we had ten. Okay. Uh, and what we did with the ten was we established, you know, the league sent us all the questions and stuff right. like that. So we went through there to see do we want to ask all the questions or not. So we developed that as a committee. Uh, but then based on schedules, everybody's schedules being busy, mm -hmm. uh, we did interviews, you know, during the week. Some of them we did like uh, during the working day and some of them we did like in the later. Mm -hmm. afternoon and evening mm -hmm. and we divided that up to have four or five members at each one of those so mm -hmm. there were some cases that I think I went to all but one mm -hmm. but there were some cases that some of us went to all of them mm -hmm. some might have missed one um, but uh, ones that weren't there we took notes so that we were able to share with others so they were able to fill in um, and uh, that's kind of the, the way we went with it. Well, so that was a little different situation at that time because it was in the middle of winter when, say, you, uh, you weren't working. Right? Oh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to, you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. I guess it will depend on when yeah. we set them up. But well, the other thing, too, is it's your schedule. So you certainly can, you know, I think that people that are applying for this a position like this are realizing they're probably going to interview in the evening, you yeah. know, because, you, you know, in the past when I've assisted in this, all of them were set up at like the earliest, I think might have been five, you know, when people got out of work and then that's the way they were interviewed. And sometimes we would try to stack them for them. So maybe they would see, I think the most they ever saw was two or three people in one night and um, and, and that was it. But we had a schedule, so they would call you know, and make an appointment and we would do that for them. So, but I do know you had some interest last time I think Penny Griffin asked, and maybe somebody else at the meeting asked about a committee, so certainly that's something you're going to want to, if you're going to put the ad out, you're going to want to put that on your next agenda to maybe make that determination, or? I, I would, I mean, unless the board have, wants to go a different route, I mean, I would think that we would want to get the information out there now on, uh, you know, the town manager hiring committee. Uh, I, I got a, a lot of good feedback last time from you know, I mean, we have all the rights to just do it ourselves and not include anybody, but I, I, I think that we had, surprisingly, we had um, some really good feedback and, and some really vital members last time. And I was, when I went into it last time, I was thinking, oh boy, you know, it, I think we had 32 or 34 candidates. Yeah. Wow. And then the first meeting we had, everybody had to, everybody had to pick 10 and two alternates. Mm -hmm. And then we sat down and we're like, oh, this is going to be all over the but believe it or not, once people went through that, mm -hmm. I mean, I would say a majority of us had the same 10 or 12 people. Mm -hmm. You know, there might be one outlier, and then that person would have to make a case of what they thought, you know. Right, sure. And then, and believe it or not, once we started going through the process, the, the committee that we had were thinking almost through the whole, you know, identical. And then That's at the end, we, we had pretty much, you know, we had narrowed it down to two candidates. Yeah. And, um, that's so good. They, was, um, even though I thought it would be like, oh, like, you know, everybody would be fighting over different candidates and right. Uh, the ultimate decision is the board. Right. Yeah. And so I thought it went really well. I've I'm seen saying. it done both ways, where just the board did it, and I've seen it where it was a committee, but it was only, it was only what they did not. It was they added two people to their board. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. I know certainly um, another town has been, you know, sometimes the employees have you know, wanted input. And I think the way that it, I've seen it handled in other towns, very, that's the very, the thought was allow them to perhaps present to the, to the committee a couple of questions. Right. They do work with the person. Maybe they have a question that maybe somebody didn't think of. So they were able to propose a couple of questions, whether or not they were used in the end, I don't know. But it was a way to be, be help people feel. And I don't think the, the number last time, 
I don't think we just said we wanted to have 10. I think it just ended up being 10 once we had, I think we had five people that were interested. So, um, how do you do that? I mean, no, I just think it just naturally became 10. Um, which actually, in some cases, worked out well because there was, we would have, you know, first we started with the phone calls last, the, with the phone slash Skype that we got in the first round. So we had 10 interviews at, you know, different times. So it was nice that some people could make on uh, Monday but couldn't do Wednesday or something else. And, uh, so how do you determine your committee? Um, committees I've seen formed in the past, people that were interested came to a specific select board meeting and were interviewed by the board. They were asked a simple question like, why are you interested in this? And they had determined in advance how many people they were looking for, and then the select board decided um, who was going to be on the committee. I'm trying to think. I don't know if we had. Uh, I want to. I don't know. I almost want to think that, that you know the individuals did come to a select board meeting and had just like any other committee member would yeah, in, exactly. or, or had some sort of letter of interest. Right. Okay. Um, as, as I yeah. yeah, a lot of interest. I think I can remember at least one person that came, um, and then you know. So I, I think we were actually shocked to see that we got five committee members or community members last time. So um, part of that, so part of the outreach, you could we just whatever you want is what will make happen. But you, we could put something out on Facebook and on the website mm -hmm. saying that you are. Anyone interested in being in a town hiring committee must submit a letter of interest prior to whatever the date is. Um, or we can say prior to or attend the July 8th select board meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that way, if you give it enough time for everybody to. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So some of the letters may not be in your packet. You may see them that night if you're trying to give them enough time. Yeah, because you're going to want to have. So you know, we close this, if July 31st is our close, our deadline to apply, we're going to want to have at least one meeting, if not two, by then, yeah. for the committee to start working on questions and exactly. first round interviews and stuff. So, so can, can I ask why you just put an arbitrary deadline of, to stop advertising? I mean, why not stop advertising and find the gap or the girl? Um, because you also don't have to. Have a saturation bombing of advertising. I mean, you guys, right. I think the discussion you guys had about sort of reaching different groups. I thought it was good. Good. I don't think you have to have the, the ad out each week because people don't necessarily look at everything each week. You know, I think you could skip a week here or there. Yeah, that's true. They do the two weeks. You could do one week, not a week, and then the second week to kind of cover your month and face <laughs> the right person or the right hundred people looking at the paper. I, mean, I was just trying to. I, 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 We just kind of was just let it go organically, you know, let, you know, you don't get enough resume that you like, you know, inject another ad, see what else comes. And we didn't put a deadline or, or, or a level of how many uh, selections each board member had. It really just happened organically. People, you know, I like these two guys. I like this, you know, this person. And you took all the, 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 the passion from the various people and the discussion really Develop on its own with people pitching their, their guests, and we wound up with about 10. Yeah. But I mean, it was like we didn't have to say pick the top 10. Just, yeah. Well, in this case, we don't really know how many applicants we're going to get because they had so many. Maybe that's why. Well, we had, yeah, we went nationally last time, so we had 32 or 34 yeah. that ended up. But people, you guys know, people's work level determines something that you really want to look at. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys are, you guys pass a lot of paper in meetings. I know you guys want to kind of get it to streamline and get just to the facts. That's true. You know, so it does. It does happen. And sometimes, it, honestly, what will happen is if they don't get handled, they want to go back out and, have, and they'll just they'll use the same process. They'll just re-advertise. Yeah. So I mean, that's all I'm saying. I think if you get too many set rules, people focus too much on the rules instead of the goal, which is to yeah. choose the person. Well, last time, last time, you know. Going to the league, anyways. They did a a one month uh, advertisement deadline application, and 
the timeline was set up for six months, start to finish, and it ended up taking us seven months is what uh, my notes, I went back and was looking through them. So, um, you know, so we're, we're thinking that it's gonna be, the idea for the deadline is, is because right now, you know, Teresa's agreed to stay on with us through the end of the year. Um, right, we have a time on it. Right, so we're, we're thinking six months, you know, to try and, to try and do this, and we've gone, We've done it two ways, like um, two town managers ago and Keith came on. That was relatively, from what I understand, a quick process. Um, they went regionally. They got like, I don't know, three or four individuals and, and they hired Keith. Um, and then last time, it was, we went lengthier. You know, we went. How did, how did you guys reach Fred? Well, last time was a little different because we had, last time we had a, a longer ball. Last time we knew uh, Keith had given us uh, plenty, the other town manager had given us plenty of time uh, to start the search because uh, he was retired. So uh, we went nationally on that and, um, and um, Greg? Greg Fowler, I mean, he was looking for. He, he was on one of the one of the municipality sites. And once you get it into the league and they, they hit their different municipalities, a lot of them piggyback on top of those. So, you know, um, so that's how he came across it. He was looking to come out here because he, yeah. his wife's family moved out here and whatnot. So. I don't know if you guys, because it's a, you know, how do you determine between who's really good at doing the job and who's really good at getting the job? Well, yeah, believe it or not, are usually people are kind of mean, whoever. believe it or not, and it's kind of, I mean, we talk all night, but believe it or not, the last time it was kind of interesting was when we, you know, we had so many applicants that we said, listen, everybody pick 10 and have two alternates, you know, and so we all picked them, and believe it or not, we, a majority of us had the same top three people. And I can tell you that this, those top three people, none of them made the final interview. <laughs> so it's kind of an interesting process. So that's what I mean. That, those are people yep. that are good at getting a job. And, and, and those and those people that I, I would say every single one of us had one, two, and three were all local. Uh, they all had a, a very large resume of municipality experience. And they got weeded out early or middle in the process. And it's just the... It's just kind of an interesting process the way it goes, you know, as you're going and you get to, you know, there's a big difference between reading something on paper and actually doing the first phone interview on the Skype. Uh, you know, uh, we interviewed one of the first ones and uh, he, you know, I remember it clearly within the first question I was, you know, kind of turned off because he didn't know anything about Bethel. And you would think that if you were going to apply to be the town manager of Bethel, you might have done some research, yeah. right? So, you know, there's all those things. You know, I can tell you that Greg's, you know, he he went, you know, he had taken some in-depth time to study what we were doing for the water issues we had in the town. I mean, he knew a lot of the information, but um, and it was kind of cool because the two candidates that we came down to, Greg and a, uh, another lady from New York, were completely didn't have the exact qualifications that we intended to look for, you know. But, you know, through that process it was, and the lady from New York, she had like a substantial financial background, you know. So it was just weird, it, it's cool how that yeah. kind of process went. I think it's, I think it's personnel. I think that you, I, we're talking about this today, you're going to be hired people, several people, and it's funny how you read this resume and you think this is your person, and you meet them and you're like, no. Yeah. You, you, you know the dynamic and what you need to fit in, so I think it's interesting the way that it, I, I, you know, it, it becomes an organic process that way sometimes just by the personality. And just by talking to their, their referrals. Exactly. Sorry, so we'll put that So with the thing. board right now, are we, are we good with moving forward with getting the word out there about, uh, Next meeting, anybody that's we'll say interested to interest prior to July eighth or attend the July eighth meeting. Perfect. And I know you have somebody on the agenda already, so it may be six thirty, but you know that is. Perfect. Somebody's on. Uh, and then seven six fifteen. Two Rivers is on at six fifteen. We also I just have, told Dylan. Oh, sorry. Actually, five. I told Two Rivers he was at like I said, it takes you five minutes to prove the agenda. You could put you at six ten. 
the villain's going to take you two minutes because you already know what he wants. So, and it's Peter uh, Gregory from Two Rivers trying to find, convince one of you, Paul, or someone, or someone in the audience to take over Carl's spot uh, on the Two Rivers, um, uh, you know, going to the meetings. Uh, so, um, and I think there's only like nine here. So he's going to come in and do that. So I figured uh, we'd do him and Dylan and then put these guys right behind him. So does anybody other than I'll go through the the two pieces of paper that I gave you. I mean that the town manager job description is, is really just a, a blanket town manager job description that the league has. And, um, yeah, so just two quick things. Um, I know you said you just put that cover yep. piece together, but uh, second second line or second sentence. Second paragraph. Got it. Very good. Her or she. Okay, great. And then um, Paul got it within 10 seconds. <laughs> way off. Well, well, way well, off. Well, I put it in there intentionally just to see. Yeah. Reason I had a bet. <laughs> How quickly will Paul get it? <laughs> like, Maybe. Paul Paul on the back side of the description. Yeah. So it says bachelor's, or sorry, bachelor's. Under the job description one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Language. Yep. Yeah. And I'll see, hopefully, I'll probably have to retype the whole thing because I don't think I have the original draft that the league gave us. So I'll, I'll uh, do that. Okay. So other than that, everybody's good with that? Yeah. So you'll just forward the ad to Kelly and I'll tell her where you want it advertised once you get her the ad. Yep. Hey, or, one way to save you from. Uh, Retyping that, but also might just be an interesting approach to this would be instead of stating a bachelor's degree is not required in that way to, to say would consider the right applicant, even you know even if they don't have a bachelor's degree, it's better working with that. Yeah. But just to, to instead of wording it so bluntly as it's not required, but doing you can say preferred. Yeah, yeah. Preferred will consider for the right applicant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you say prefer, then you, by reading that ad, you know that you don't have to, but uh, that's where some people will leave themselves out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All that was just back through the group and not really interesting. Yeah. So. Right. And you'll find an email address for whoever wants to fly in now? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll look. It won't be tonight because i got to go to work when I get out of here. I'll, uh, I'll, Figure out some sort of Gmail account that has something to do with Bethel Town Manager or something. Let me work on it. So let me work on it. If you want to just email me what it is, and we'll, uh, I'll fill in the blank on it. So, so that should get us going on the timeline for, um, and then you know, really the next thing we'll have to do is just um, establish the committee and then get a committee meeting. So we'll have, um, yeah, so I'll tell Kelly what the places are and you're going to send her the ad and I'll ask her to post uh, this on Facebook and on the website about the hiring committee. And probably, Lisa's probably going to put that in her notes anyways for the, the, okay. the that you're looking. Can she is always got her back. What's that? Can I do it under your name? Uh, Mo's, yes. What's his name? You're your friend with that name. Select board meeting minutes from the 10th of June. Anybody have any? Well, I don't think it's feeling something. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. All right, entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes of the 10th of June. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And the constable reports. I have a question about the ticket. Okay. It's a uh, <coughs> S2, SL2, and SL3. What is all that? Those are, but my guess is those are just the code, so it depends on uh, probably what type of ticket it is, um, would be my guess number, because that would be something you use to process. It could be whatever the fine is. Like maybe it's a. Um, that's my, when I saw it, that was my guess. Yeah. I, I didn't ask Oscar, but my guess is it depends on the ticket. Maybe 
whether it's traffic, municipal, or I don't know. And these, these, these are dollar figures that yes. are the assessment? Yep. Wow. And also, that code could also be because the state keeps the percentage of the ticket. Maybe that's also how it varies. I don't know. Because the, the, whatever the total violation Who do you know your name is? Oh. Whatever the total your tickets name. are, it doesn't count. Um, we don't get that whole $1,000. Yeah. Some of it, the state keeps their person. Uh, so, so I don't know if it's like that. Next time I say I'm going Yeah, there you go. Uh, I figured it was some state thing, but. 0046. I, I don't know what the codes are, but I didn't notice that you had two different trailer trucks pulled over around that time, so we didn't have to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not sure. He was awesome. questioning whether he could get him for speeding in the water truck or not because he's not. I saw him pull him down here. There's up there. He got him on him down in the work zone one day, yeah. right down by McCall's there. Oh, I did it. I gave you. Oh, yeah, McCall has it. I need to put it in my so yeah, you're, uh, well, I don't know about that one. Okay. Um, but you know, some of the feedback I've gotten so far from individuals is um, um, that, well, I wouldn't say necessarily him in general, but the constable has been doing a good job in the CMF battle. Oh, good. I think there's a lot of people still that don't know who he is. Or, right, I'm um, sure. Don't know him by name, you know, right. other than, you know, the other person the other day was mentioning how uh, the new constable is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and they, he certainly has introduced himself to businesses at the school. And, you know, I think people will, as they. Uh, that one was neat the other day. It's, uh, Oscar had somebody pulled over in my work zone uh -huh. down here. And inside the work zone was was Mark who was I know. the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was so funny. I so they both were in the same work zone at the same time. Exactly. Doing different things. Uh, so but that was kind of neat. So, but he, he's definitely getting around, and um, I think the longer he's here, but okay. So that's perfect. Thank you. So we'll add that in. Well, you could just be the uh, no, manager of that. No, you're in your name on it. It even says hi, Chris. <laughs> yeah, and thanks. Google. Lovely. So these minutes from May 28th are just in uh, corrected minutes? Select board, select board minutes? Oh, sorry. Um, yes, because I think that the pen pinned yeah. to the bottle. We had one that needed to be corrected. Yeah, the way the... Uh, yeah, that was her kind of fixed those. So that was Mrs. Yeah, right. I fixed that. And so yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, I know. I think um it was like one day Yeah, that's why they were just like right in that. That's all. Yeah. Other communications. Everybody got the um, projections and the. So the um, I had a question. Um, I asked and I got from Paul. Just make sure everybody saw it. That I'm just asking for a list from each of you of what you believe to be of the outstanding items. I'm trying to create a list of them. Paul gave me his list. Greg um, didn't. Um, we talked about it. He had a couple things that he gave me that I asked him about. So, and so what I'm trying to do is have everybody tell me what they think is outstanding. Items that you've been working on that you haven't come to a close, something like that. Obviously, I know the nuisance ordinance is one of them. Um, I know that, you know, since so we talked about the nuisance ordinance, um, which I knew about. Paul had a couple on his, and I can't remember the list. I had a couple things from 
right? So, so I'm just trying to, I typed it up, so I'm trying to get yeah. everybody's thoughts in one list and then I can give it to you and I think it's something that if you saw in your packet, you know, it'd be nice to, you know, something doesn't fall off the radar and we can say, okay, um, this is what's, you know, what's happening with the nuisance policy and where we're at with it. And then as long as it stays on this list until you take care of it, it's kind of nice so that things don't fall by the wayside. And also we had an agreement that we're not rolling out new policies, so I'd like to know what we're, we're all in agreement. You can't say, oh, geez, we're going to. I know one thing that's crazy. <laughs> one thing that we'll have to add to that list to continue the discussion, maybe as soon as we get through a little bit of the FEMA stuff, was um, uh, the capital building fund. Yes, because I have uh, I have some ideas about that. Footprint that we were looking at, you know, oh, which, which was mainly looking at the public works yes, building, that is which on, goes to David's comment about trucks being outside. That's on his. Um, that was on his list. Yeah, that so was yeah, on his list. Sure. I think that's. As well as, um, you know, uh, the process of the uh, potential ordinance. The nuisance, yeah, yeah. that's and on we there. And we're gathering some information in regards to other ordinances, either local or regional examples of what okay. the language could look like, um, and then for us to kind of start kicking it around from there. But okay. I know that kind of guy. That's what Paul said. And my, actually, I just knew yeah. it was policy. I didn't know how far. I know it kind of got put back a little bit when everything else happened. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we used to have a, a list of symbols. You did. I actually yeah. saw it in a packet. I was going back looking for stuff for Chris or for you guys for the town manager search, and I saw it, and I, and I liked it. And, I, and uh, we used to keep a list, too. Right. Because you need one, because things get ahead of you, and then you think, what, what do we do with that? And, and what happened to it? And so um, I thought it would be nice to, to have that so we could all be on the same page. We're excited to hear something that two or three years, two or three years old. And, I, then it's all and then it just, yeah, then I could tell once he took over, it must have been something Keith did, and then he stopped. I saw that it never surfaced again, so I was just curious. But I figured it would be good for the start of that. The only reason why I say those two is we'll need a. Yeah. We kind of have a deadline to get those done before do. uh, before the warning. Yes, and they're they're on the list. The other one I, question I had was on your agenda. Um, it's personal preference for you, whatever you want. Is, is um, I see on this agenda the way it's normally done. Is there's no room for? I guess this is the time to bring up your concerns if you had any. Um, I know in other places we used to slot something in there that said. Right at the end of the meeting, I said select board concerns. So if there's something that um, you saw, you heard, whatever, you could bring it up. But maybe this is the time we would normally do that. Is that how you normally handle that? Maybe we've always been kind of kicking around with other business. With okay. Just a, so we'll just continue. Anything that. that we're not going to you know, move forward or make any motions for, or okay. any, uh, any heads up on yeah. something maybe we want to add next time. Or, okay. That's kind of where we've. You've done it. Okay. I just was curious about that. How you um, what you want to do then? All right. So, so John, you have been here all night. Are you? Um, Am I not on the agenda? No. Did you not get your phone call? I called and left you a message on your voicemail, and uh, the agenda, the copies are there. I was curious, but I'm sure the board can. Okay. Well, here we on the next meeting. Well, I mean. That's up to the board. Uh, I mean, we can fit you in under the, <clears throat> as long as we're not taking action on anything, we can talk about it in other business. I just, um, I appreciate you guys uh, um, looking at the abatement. Um, I was, of course, disappointed that you couldn't you know, see what, what we needed to do. Um, it does leave me in a bad spot because I can't, we, we can pay what we're paying now, but we're not going to be able to take care of the rest of it. Did you guys, how did you come up with that figure of 1800, 1800? Well, the message I left was, um, for you, I can, tell, I can tell you, was just basically that it was um, something in good faith that they had taken a look at your numbers and, and work that Greg had done and kind of looked at it and 
came up with a number and also agreed to abate the interest and penalty. And, and um, they had felt that you had had opportunities while maybe you weren't getting the response you desired from the town office and or manager. You could have come to the select board meeting at any time and, and brought that to their attention. So it kind of wasn't a... Oh, there was, they they kind of, so it's because they hadn't acted before this? They had looked at Greg, some notes that Greg had taken along with yours, and they kind of had come up with a number. For well, the, I mean, I think the challenge was that, um, you know, it stemmed through three administrations here. So there's, you know, it stemmed through 11 years, I think, worth of time. So, um, so, years. so well, we've been involved. We bought it for the two properties, commercial properties, and the house we bought. I'm sorry, it started in 2001, yeah. right? Correct. Now, the yeah. buildings that we bought, we're both, both in distress because neither of them could hold the holding costs. Uh -huh. the, the water and taxes were, were killing them as well. So I, I, how we came to our conclusion was we looked, we looked over that time period um, and uh, through your account, through, you know, through the NEMRIC system, and, and there was, and I don't have it all in front of me right now, but there was a period of time at the beginning, I'll say maybe it was the first three or four years where there was no activity on the account. No adjustments were made. Nothing was done. Zero. Yeah, we were just busy working. Yeah, and then there was a period of time. But we were in the in the town hall every year trying okay. to sort it out. And then there was a period of time in what I'll call the middle, uh, which I think was exactly two years. Yeah, yeah it was eight quarters. Mm -hmm. There was eight, qu eight quarters where there were adjustments being made on the account. If they were going back and forth, they'd make an adjustment and they'd take it off. Yeah. Well, and there was no rhyme or reason to it. Right. And it was it was frustrating, but we were just kind of putting our nose to the grindstone yeah. and just trying to keep going. And we sort of we decided we were going to try to persevere through. I mean, we that big on Bethel. Holly and I invested pretty much everything here, and now we're on the narrow thread of losing. I mean, I came to you guys hand in hand that that I'm only here. We just hope we can pull through it and we pay it anyway. But through a bad uh, decision on my part, I dealt with a, a family member who damn near financially killed me. And so any financial cushion that we had is gone. Right. So now I'm really, you know, Holly spent a lot of time doing that forensic work to really come up with accurate figures the best that we could. I mean, without the, the surveys that we filled out of here, and it is our fault, we should have made copies. But we just, I've never dealt with a, and please, I don't, and not even are responsible for this. You're holding the bag because you're the latest, you know, in the, you know, in the stack of people that have dealt with this. But I've never lost all that, that kind of information. It never occurred to me that I should copy, you know, have copies of that stuff. Um, so you know, had we, if we had it, this would be a straightforward issue. Right. And, 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 and I think that's kind of how, how we came to our decision was, was, as I was saying, there was the, we'll call it the first part, where there was no adjustment made, there was nothing, was, you know, granted, you don't have anything of record, we don't have anything of record. There's the middle piece, which was, I know it was eight quarters, because that's what we talked about, that there were adjustments being made on the account. Uh, something was being done, that's all we know. And then there was the, I'll call it the last part of it, which was what we deemed from when Greg took over until now. Uh, which and Greg's the first person that could make any sense of it. Right. So that so there was those parts. So what we went back through is we uh, because we don't know what was being adjusted or not adjusted eight years ago or whatever. So what we did is um, we had uh, we went back through our system to see what um, and we pulled up some other accounts in town. What were some of the other accounts doing during those time frames? Were there adjustments being made or not being made? Because I guess what we were thinking was um, maybe there, maybe um, maybe just maybe just there were account uh, adjustments on your account and nobody else's, or but maybe there was accounts, or maybe, or maybe nobody was pulling the right. the tablecloth out from yeah. the fully laden table with all the glasses in place. You know, we had people living in that in that building. You know, Betty Chase had been there for thirty five years. We didn't have to kick her out. I mean, the business move would have been to kick everybody out, do all the work in one big shop, and then we came in, we're thinking we're going to do that. But you get to know these people. You know, Shannon Stone raised her kid there. Um, another 
you know, model. It's restricted. That's all they'd ever know. So we decided we'd work around it. And, you know, the building survey didn't say we had knob and tube wiring area. And, it, 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 you know, so we wound up doing all this stuff sort of fast backwards uh, to fix this thing. So that's kind of, you guys said earlier that you were worried that you were setting a precedent. I don't think anybody has two buildings here that they restored it the way we have, which is, you know, with people in it. Well, I think on our end of things, had, had either the town or you had 100% written documents that said, you know, had, had you had stuff or one form of communication from the town. Well, we did. We had electric bills. Well, I, we had at least I, some. I understand it, but the electric bills won't. I know they tell a story, but they don't. They don't say that those but they don't, don't necessarily right? say that. But they, they don't necessarily say that there's a communication between you and the town, other than we know that there were certain periods that there was some communication that did happen. So had had in our position, anyways, had you had something that said, "Hey, I talked to so and so on this date, and they we were going to make this correction. It didn't happen, and then the next month there was another correction." If you had something like that, it would have been a lot easier decision for the board. So what we had to look through is, because the, the setting precedent thing would be if you come in with, in this case, your utility bills, right? And say, well, I'm paying the utility bills when it's, when, when there's no tenants in there. So well, I can tell you that. that the town wouldn't keep right. the corroborating evidence. So what I'm just saying is. The town has some culpability here because they didn't keep the evidence. Exactly. And, and that's why we've made a good faith, faith uh, gesture. But what I'm saying is, had the board awarded you in this case, I would believe all, all the money owed, then what is that to stop somebody else from coming in and saying, hey, I got some utility bills during you know, the late 90s, and you guys did you know, help us out. But I mean, so, I could bring people in who would, they would right. testify that those buildings, that those, those apartments were, because I say, she so, has been there since the beginning. She knows exactly what we've, we've done. So then, have her come in and testify to you guys that the corroborate was those electric bills in our name corroborate the fact that those were uh, uh, apartments that couldn't have been rented because they weren't, there was no water. It was, we just had, you know, temporary plugs in there to do work. And, and we understand that, that and when we say a good faith gesture or offer, it wasn't just we just picked a number and put it on there. We went through the, the, the eight quarters. There was eight quarters that there were adjustments being made. And we went through those eight quarters and said, okay, if these adjustments were being made during these eight quarters, this is what the value would be. And, and that was the figure that we came up with. And then we decided as a board that we would credit you for that eight quarters that there clearly was communication. Because we can prove that something was happening on your account, right? Uh, that we would credit you th those eight quarters uh, of, um, of monies and any um, penalties or interest that we would have appeared on the town. Account. The only way you know that is that, that the town but, at that time responded. I, I they understand. wouldn't make adjustments when we right. before that. But there, I understand. And I, I'm not in a position to know well, what I happened. Know you're in that position. And the, so. the second part of my thing, I believe for another night, because I, I would like to talk about the, the water and sewer and know more about it. And if there's any, like the, there's no real good information about what's happening with it. I'd like to know from my own standpoint, kind of what the long-term health is. Because, I mean, if, if, the, if the, you know, it's quadruple now, it's what, about 400% of what it was when we first purchased these buildings. If that trend continues, it makes the business model not work. So I haven't had to come up with another thing. I mean, I've kept one of the options I came up with was we even have to get rid of, you know, all of the one kitchen and turn it into a single family house, which wouldn't give you guys any good because it loses, you know, income. And that's what would be my choice, but I'm trying to figure out how do I get out of this mess? Well, I can tell you on our end of things, currently, anyways, is, you know, the, the board has granted approval to credit your account the, the monies um, that
that we came up with. Which I do appreciate. Based on, based on the assessment that we have done independently of, you know, I, I don't know about the surveys and who tells what or how often they came in, um, but, but we're able to uh, credit you that and feel confident that if another owner came forward that we would be able to treat them the same exact way that you were treated. Uh, but there are other ways, and I'm sure, you know, if, if there is a hardship with the water or sewer at those residents and trying to, you know, catch up or, or pay those down. Well, this is what's going to happen. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm, just saying, hold on. I'm saying there, there are opportunities that we're more than willing as a board to work with you to get you in uh, hopefully a better position of yeah, working. Payment plan. Uh, right. 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 Yeah, we appreciate all of your efforts, everybody. Um, I, I, I interrupt because I lived in New York for a little while, so I learned to interrupt people. At least I just wanted to talk. Hey, hey. You're never going to do over. That was 35 years ago. Um, my worry is that that the two grand is left to, to, to whatever it is, um, is going to accumulate more penalties and problems. Because we, right now, we're paying monthly on what we think we've established we have. Um, we haven't gotten anything back that reflects that, so I was going to go talk to you about that at some point. Um, but it's so worried that now this two, this, this, this outstanding part, is just going to pile up. And it's so it's very, I mean, we're going to have a fifth apartment going in there, and that hopefully October, whatever. And um, if I could get some cash together, put some solar panels on, keep hammering down my expenses, you know, so that there's that, some of the solar panels, maybe add to the heat issues, and possibly get some PV panels, take care of the house bills, tighten it up a little bit more so I'm spending less on pellets. I can maybe get this to a point where it's actually almost profitable. I mean, I'm selling assets right now just to cover bills. And I can't sell assets to cover bills, uh, uh, continue to fix up both buildings, because we're hoping to actually have the second building, you know, have some kind of point of sale situation for all these you know, food things and just some other stuff. I just think it would be good to have more things going on in this town. And right now, this town is kind of a, a bit of a Hollywood movie set. I mean, there's a lot of empty spaces behind those painted doors. Um, we just want the best for the town, and we just want to survive ourselves. And we pick this town to try to live. So. And there's certainly a way as far as, you know, if, um, you know, if we work out a deal where we're, just, we're not charging the penalty, or, I mean, we can work out a deal. If you guys can let that real sit, you can let that two something grand sit there, so we can figure out how to pay for it. And that would accumulate more expenses. That would be extremely helpful. Sure. Um, we can totally do that. Yeah. And, 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 and like we said before, I mean, and, and I don't know if you've been here at any of the meetings that, well, like Dylan, he's been well, purchasing some properties. And, and, we're, and I think I had mentioned this um, when you had come before the board the first time. Dylan's brother was here the last time. That we, you know, I can't speak for all five of us, but, you know, so far we have been more than willing to work with anybody that it wants to refurbish and make our downtown, you know, an improvement to it. Um, and if that is, you know, um, redoing a, you know, one of your units or, or buying a building, you know, we're willing to work with you. Um, we do obviously have some limitations of what we can do. We can't, you know, um, but I, I know it's, you know, so far to date, we, we wanted to, uh, you know, work with the owners as much as we possibly can. And, and um, in, in some cases of that is, and you know, some people right now see it as a little bit of a negative thing, but you know, the first thing was really to, you know, figure out how much was it costing us to do, do water in this town. Uh, you know, we were printing money, you know, when it came to water bills. And the next step we're in right now is, uh, which we're doing the engineering on, is actually moving forward with our phasing of of getting our water system upgraded to where it should be. And and so the question I had was, is there, so there is a long term. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it wasn't the yeah. last select board meeting. They have, yeah. we have the engineers here and stuff, and you can see. But certainly, if you call, I, 
call the office. I have a couple meetings like this week and next, but if you call me when it works for you, come in and we'll, we'll totally work this out. We'll make a plan and see what other offer, what else the town can do. So if you come in and see me, I'm happy then. So I, I would say, you know, just, yeah, just make, make a time to see um, Therese and and I'm sure she can work through some of those issues with you. Well, when I first got this note, I tried to get in to see you guys, but I got the walker wouldn't go up the stairs. Oh, no, they don't know. Just come in or call or whatever, and we'll work it out, John. Oh. All right, well, thank you very much. You're well, I, I did know that you were, I thought you were just taking interest in the meeting. I was surprised I didn't know you had a, I didn't know you had a time. It needs to be replaced, and that's also uh, sort of. Oh, I'm sorry. It was the message that it was a number that we had for you that you left before, I think, for Greg. So that was a number I thought. Yeah, well, that. since then, the battery, the battery doesn't work for Oh, well, I'm sorry, John. I don't know. All right. Well, have a good evening. Come Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other business coming before the board? Yes. The boys did some work at the cemetery. The scale of the tree. Yep. What they did is looks nice, but it's not complete. There's, I talked to Cecil, and he's not going to sell any more plots, but there are alternative places. But with what they did, they made a path this wide. Mm -hmm. So a truck to deliver a ball can't be there. I thought the minute said that they were just going to install like a walking like a path so that people could access it. So, because I, right. I was curious so about that myself. And I, think I that. about the tournament trucks getting in there, they can. I think all we talked about that time was for walking individuals as well as the I, little bit and of that the improvements. Yeah. yeah. Who's going to carry the trash? Okay. Who's going to carry the yeah. sand yeah. ball? Uh, I'm just saying it's something that is on that list mm -hmm. probably needs to be still addressed. And I think. I think the big thing with the Cherry Hill Cemetery is, there's, as we know, is there's there's multiple issues there, yeah. and I know when I first started getting on the board, it started popping up, and it sounds like that there were years of, you know, either maybe there was communication and the town just didn't do anything with it. I don't know how that went, but I know when Mo and I got on the board, is when that came onto the radar again, when Keith was here. Uh, I, I went up there and did some covert work, I think. Yeah. yeah. So I've, I've talked to Kirk several times now. And because of the, the group that he rents land to, he's going to be here in the next week or so. Mm -hmm. I, I asked if it would be possible if that could be resolved. I mean, I had an idea how to resolve it. It's, there's a good pitch from the back to the front. But there, when they built the road, they saved some material and left a dip. And there is a, I wouldn't call it a culvert, I'd call it an eight-inch piece of pipe that dumps water from both ways on that cemetery. So I asked him if they would consider building that road so it was a that ditch with a constant pitch to the culvert. The culvert that's going to distribute the water around the cemetery. We thought that might be possible. Okay. But along with that, I I still think that you've got to get an internment truck in here, so there's some more work to do. Yeah. She's not come back. Yeah, I, I Well I mean I thought I could double check to see what it said and it said and and that was my understanding was it was just it just for people to walk yeah. But I can if you want, I can tell Alan it needs to be it needs to be able to get it. But we'd rather see what uh, that group wants to do. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't know that I would rush into that. Okay, don't no, see what yeah. the next, what they'll do. Could, you know, that would be great, except that if they're going to dump all that water in the middle of there, it's already wet. Yeah. Can you dump that water in there, too? I'm yeah. hoping this, I'm hoping to run the cross from those, whatever <coughs> that group is. Yeah. Cecil, yeah, he said that they never, he did, like, they never took those on the there. So is that something that you're going to be able to pursue? Is I'm going to pursue it. I'm not sure I can get it done, but I'm going to 
try. That's great. Go, Dave. <laughs> I think that's great. Our script cut the numbers are going well. Not without a lot more different stipulations. Yeah. Well, that's good. Thank you. I'm glad that you're doing that. I think it just that's what it needed. Somebody to talk to somebody about it. All right. So, uh, so I need a uh, motion to enter executive session to discuss the evaluation of town of Bethel department heads and public officers. Second. All in favor? Aye. 